eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Thursday Night Life Fly Tying, the show where passion for fly fishing meets creativity and camaraderie. It's our sixth season, and we're thrilled to have you with us. Without all of you who purchased Season 6 kits and our fantastic sponsors, we wouldn't be able to keep going. So for this, we want to start with a huge thank you, Morning View Mercantile, Lyle Peterman Real Estate, Craft Bear Nation, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Shore Fishing, Fish Bond, Fly Fusion, and Friesen Brothers. Born in a humble brewery in 2018, our journey began with a simple idea to bring together like-minded souls for an evening of stories, laughter, and the art of fly tying. Our doors were always open, our hearts always welcoming. When the tides of time brought challenges, we evolved from a cozy corner in a brewery to screens across the world, Thursday Night Life Fly Tying transformed into a virtual stage, forging the unbreakable TNL fam. Every Thursday, join our hosts, the ever entertaining Dana and the skilled artisan Tim, as they weave magic with their stories and skills. Dana brings the laughter, and Tim brings the craft. Tonight, as always, we tie two unique patterns, celebrate our wins, and share a toast with our favorite beverage from our friends at Craft Beer Nation. Stay tuned for surprises, flying go and prizes, and above all, the love that binds the TNL fam. Let's dive into the world of fly tying together. What? Tunes. Uh, Some tunes. But in good people, the tunes are there. They're the coming in good. hot. <laughs> you guys are there. Tim is there. Who I'm do we here. got on the couch guy? Oh. Mr. OQP himself. Couch guy. <laughs> <laughs> couch guy. The couch guy. It's couch guy. When I you like show up and sit on the couch, you're a couch guy. And uh, that's exactly what Mr. Fitzsimmons is today. Everybody, welcome. Round of clicks for the couch guy. There it is. What up? What up? What up? He said, so I just sit here and I said, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want to do? <laughs> what else do you want to do? Uh, yeah, this is episode number numero deuce. deuce. I don't deuce. remember. My ear <laughs> were in deuce like poo. Deucey deuce. Deucey poo. Um, so yeah, anyways, let us know. My name's Dana. This is Tim and that's Cole, aka the couch guy. But what I would highly suggest is for you know I figured it out, Tim. What's that? Remember last week? You guys remember last week? I had a bit of a struggle. I was on the struggle bus. Yes. Sometimes that's a little loud, but I was on the struggle bus because I couldn't get my microphone to get higher into my face. Well, why don't well, you tell me how I you solved that problem? I was thinking about 
getting a wedge to put underneath this clamp over here. I had a lot of thoughts and I spent some serious time trying to figure out what I would do until I woke up in the middle of the night and had an aha moment, which was your name is Dana Lattery on the show. That's what I thought. Uh, it's a little thing. Oh, wait, he's tricking that. everyone. Tricked, we tricked really? him. I wish I could. I was grow trying to like see that. if uh, anybody caught on. So what did I do? <laughs> I woke up and I realized that I have an electric desk, Tim, and it goes uh, up and it goes down. There was a lot of struggling last week for. I know. The so click I, of just, a button. I just hit the button and um, you raise it up. Raise it up. You raise and then I raise it down. <laughs> raise me up from. <laughs> was that one of your favorite uh, America? No, that was uh, before that. What are you talking about? Raise me up. That was um, that's Josh Groban, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but he was on the show called. <sighs> I got no clue. American Idol, Tim. It was when you were still in diapers, oh, diapers back yeah. in the early two thousands. But uh, I was gonna say I thought it was a twinkle in my dad's eye about that time. Yeah, you were. Yeah. <laughs> you were. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Not that old. Anyways, uh, Josh Groban, you raised me up, and that's exactly <laughs> what Josh does, Groban did. did. <laughs> so I thought I was darn near perfect until I saw that Ray didn't have any hooks in his kit, and uh, I felt shame. That's so, a Sorry, Ray. Um, yeah, we'll send you out another kit there and make sure that that one has hooks in it. Sometimes after packaging a lot of kits... <clears throat> That package of hooks, <laughs> miss. Um, so what you can do. Uh, well, if you have extra hooks. <laughs> I was waiting for like this elaborate explanation. If you do you have do extra hooks lying just around. Silence. <laughs> um, you can just uh, you can use, use those. those. Pretty simple hooks tonight. Yeah. So I was trying to think like maybe we could reach in another package. Uh, and see what's happening there. So if you're on the Instagram, the aspect ratio sucks. So come and join us on YouTube yeah. or Facebook. So uh, we're just experimenting with the Instagram stuff. So uh, apparently it's, I'm looking at it right now, and all they see is Tim's face with Dana's name on it. That's perfect. Well, I, I guess go to Instagram, folks. You'll get all you need. Yeah. Right there. Other things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's 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 pack it up here and say there's Ray. His kit had no hooks, and sometimes, folks, oh, that's a bummer. We don't, we don't, we miss stuff. Justin Fisher's in the house. Mikey Ritzko, but what's up, Mike? Craft Beer Nation Ooh. has brought us some great beers again. Uh, and so what I'm trying is a Lazy Bear Blonde <clears throat> Ale. Uh, it's from Alley Cat and our friends at Craft Beer Nation. So. Um, if you check out their Instagram, uh, Dave does a lot of beer reviews and yeah. a lot of them are pretty candid. So <laughs> I'm going to be very candid about this and let you guys know what, you what I'm drinking and where I'm from. That's what you're going to let us know. We do have some cool things planned tonight. We're going to tie the slum hopper, which is um, the fly that will float high. Yes, it will. We've got a few things to introduce to you guys today. Uh, one of them being the couch guy, which is <laughs> on the bottom there. And then uh, the other one is uh, the news scene is back. Yeah. I just feel like a lot it. of people missed out yeah, on the was, news scene, and so I brought it back. It's worth it. All it's right. Lazy it. Bear, Blondale. I'll go first. Okay, you go first, and I'll go. I want some articulate answer. You didn't smell it or... No, I did. Test the nose. <laughs> what do you think? <clears throat> um, it's very smooth, very <clears throat> easy. <laughs> like there's a hint of like it's maybe like wheat, but obviously it's beer. <laughs> it's beer. It's so beer. <laughs> there's a hint uh, of wheat in my beer. Kind of creamy a bit. I didn't yeah. expect that out of a blonde ale, but nice. Substance texture. I think it's very low hoppy. Yeah. 25 on the IBU scale. Checking it out. Checking it out. Um, yeah, very nice. Very nice. Highly recommend. I would eat it with Doritos or Tostitos. <laughs> Either or. <laughs> Either or together. Uh, 
You're what, up next, What Tim. I got going on is this guy here. This is a... It's going to be so bright. This is a tropical fruited Hefeweizen. Right this up your alley. From, it is. Old Yale Brewing Company. Um, it's part of the Trailblazer series. So let's see. Let's see what he's got. That is very smooth. Is it? Then it's tropical, like it, it says. Um, like, I'm just messaging here in the Instagram because it's uh, it's just oh, not. It's I don't so know how super, to end it. I don't know how to end it. It's uh, <clears throat> take a swig of that. We're mixing beers you now. Know, that that's that might top the list for me so far, actually. Caring and sharing. Like it might be too smooth. Like it could be a problem. Like it's almost uh, like lemony, but not yeah. tart. But not tart. Yeah, a little bit of fruit. Like a smooth lemon pie. Oh, Cole, what are you drinking? Well, I am drinking Dandy Breweries Dang. Dang. It's cool. Dang. Is it like Tang? It's kind of like Tang. A little bit Dang. A little Tang. A little dang in the tang. A little dang in the tang. A little fruity. American orange wheat ale, brewed oh. in Calgary. Oh, nice. And it is scrum diddly umptious. Scrum diddly umptious. We got to ask our buddy Dave if he can get it in from uh, Craft Beer Nation. Yes. What's up, mm, folks? Jennifer, day. welcome. Welcome. Good to see you again. The Fly Fisher 54. Bobbin's loaded. We're going to tell you guys coming up here when we hit the new scene, it's going to show you kind of how the things are going to go for the next. Uh, 12 episodes just to help you guys prepare a little bit more for your evening. And the first fly that we're going to tie, if you want to get your kits kind of shaken, is the Thin Mint. And then we're going to tie the Sum hop, hop Yip. Oh, yeah. To make me do yeah. a tequila shot earlier as well. So things are things are heating up over here. Uh, Tamara, is there such a thing as a clean bench? I've never seen one here. <laughs> well, you did until Ken came yeah, here and mounted Ken. a plug above you and dumped half of gallon of dry, dry Saw wall, dust right dry, yeah, dry right wall, there. dry, dry wall. Uh, Mr. Augustin, fly trout, Kenny. There he is, Mr. Dumont. I gotta, Mike, uh, message me. I gotta send you your season five kit that you want. I keep forgetting, and that'd be great. Thanks. Oh, Michael, Ooh, Michelle, Mike, Michelle, my brother from Guess another what? mother bought what? a hat. Ooh. Showed up today. That thing went fast. I think I dropped it off yesterday. Well, that means you got to get back on the boat and uh, represent. Represent. Mr. Pape, what's up? Welcome. Mr. Struthers. I saw him uh, also. See, guys, it's a little low. Well, look at that. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's wild. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I get a feeling that it's uh. never, never, never. Never enough. Oh, hey, really? David, brother really? Spencer's in the house. Oh, what's up, Dave? Uh, Sylvan Light, guys. We're cold here. It's yeah. about minus 50, and uh, that's how it goes. Ish. She's nippy. The mayor's in the house. What's Mr. Mayor? McKenna. What's up, Mike? Joey Her Harshaw from Coldale. He's down south, and yeah. uh, it's also cold down there, which usually it's not. Yeah. But it is. Cold. Just windy. Mr. Marvin Carl. Mr. Carl. Adrian Tebow. Hugh McDougal checking in from Maine. Well, oh, Hugh, up, we Hugh? love that you're here. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you checking in, even though you're two hours ahead. Mr. Yeah. Cole, happy Thursday. I thought it said Thanksgiving, and then I was <laughs> like... A little past that. Yeah, all the things going on. Doug Lindsay. Uh, see, Dana shaved, because everybody thinks you're me and I'm you. Yeah. But MF Dewey, he's back. Well, what's up, Mr. Dewey? Know, everybody's like so upset about these names and... Oh, uh, yeah, it's See, different. It's I different. could just do this, and now everybody's going to be happy. Uh, with this guy over here. Oh, uh, it's like I feel like a new man. Well, or an older man. I think you feel I like, a new, uh, like a woman. Oh, man. Man, I feel like a woman. Lower mm. your chair. I tried, but I'm as low as this chair goes. So I just raised I just <laughs> raised the desk. Raised uh, it. Paula, hello. What's happening? What's up, Paula? Darren Smith, you've been slacking. That is a fact. <laughs> we finally found a hat that fits Darren. Oh, well, that's good. You got the large. I haven't even put that one on the website yet. It's so a uh, special order. It is. Ron Croteau. Get your name straight. We did. We did. 
<laughs> I don't know where we're at, but we did. Ray. Uh, okay, great. I believe it's a must add 10 streamer hook. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what you can also check out is uh, is this. Let me come down here. Go like here. <laughs> What's happening? What's funny? Oh, Dave. He said they all taste like mustache with those curtains. <laughs> Man, jealousy runs thick like blood. Uh, it's because his wife keeps trimming his curtains. Yeah. Well. Keep her away, buddy. Just knock them scissors out of her hand. Cut the curtains. The neighbors can't watch. <laughs> oh, man. It's too good. Speaking of which, uh, is Cam City normal today? Oh, yeah, we should um, know. Yeah, so anyways, guys, question here. What is this Thursday Night Live thing? Well, we we tie flies, and we package we package all your flies. So what Ray was talking about is if you go to our website, flyfishingbover.com backslash TNLS6, um, you, you could, all the things you need, you could tie one night, you can tie all 13, like, you know, 12 nights, uh, uh, but anyways, my point of this is, if you go down here, you're going to want to do this first. Get your fly angle card. You're going to need that yes. for later. You don't want that. Um, but yeah, just like Ray was talking about, if there's a mishap and you just go in here and you just say t all, all the ingredients, the entire recipes are there for all the flies that you want to tie. If you don't want to buy a kit, then you can just go there, pre-plan yourself. Every episode's up here. The picture, the recipe, everything you need. So next week, the wine booby. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Everything you need. <laughs> but if you head back here, and uh, I don't even know where it is. Right there. So you do want to buy one. It's super easy to do. It's super easy for you to go on our website and purchase a kit. Uh, you're essentially going to get all of these uh, flies. So patterns 26. Uh, you're going to get materials to tie each pattern up to five times, and then you're going to get the fly already tied in there. So you're going to get six times 26 and all that info is right here. They're on sale from 299 down to 239 Canadian. So our American friends, that's about $180 for you guys. It's a pretty good deal. But yeah, all these patterns are right here. So, um, Super cool. We've added in um, a fly tying tray, which we use, and it's super handy. Tim doesn't use it anymore. He dumped through. He traded it in for beer. Uh, it's right there. So what we do is we dump all of our materials in there before we tie, because it's kind of like an anti-static, right? You throw all your materials in there. Um, yeah, and that's included. And then that's kind of all your all your flies right there. So the other cool thing is you can go on scrummage through our store, find out all your fly tying cool things there that um, correlate with the show. But there's more. We're going to get to there's that more. a little bit later. We're going to get to that stuff. Uh, but I was just kind of answering Ray's question there about uh, about what, what we should do if you are missing something. And uh, that's what you do. That's what you do. That's what you do right there. <clears throat> all right. So have we said have we said hey to all of you people? Because I don't think we have. So <laughs> uh Gary. Uh he said he was going to Florida. He wasn't gonna tune in, and there he is. Oh, there he is. What's up, Gary? There he is. Thanks for tuning in. Maybe a little better than Colorado, being on the west coast of Florida. Yeah. Nice. Um yes, we're, well, you got time, guys. This is why we do this. We just hang out for a bit. We let you guys get your materials ready. Ten minutes are overrated. That's a fact. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, Eli, what's up, buddy? Unfortunately, the dang from Dandy is currently sold out. Oh, oh, Cole wants heart talk. crushing. Guys, Cole, <laughs> Cole, Cole, were you talking, <laughs> or were you just you were crying? You want back in here, Cole? I'm sad. <laughs> oh You're yeah, so because his beer sold out. Uh, probably because it's that, that good. Probably because <laughs> yeah. it's that good. They're only found in Cochrane, apparently. apparently. <laughs> uh, Dusty Barnes, Black Falls, <laughs> just bought his kit. Got it. He nice. did. Dusty, did you get your kit in the mail already? Uh, I tried to send. Maybe Monday I sent those ones out. Yeah. Tried to get them out right That's away. Awesome. Uh, breaking ice off my nose, Mr. Sanguins down yeah. in Montana. Eric, 
Paula is his new girlfriend. They made it official over the past Ooh. week. Congratulations, Facebook official. I think real life official. Oh. Uh, Cam, what's up? What's up? What's up? We got everybody. Mr. Bags is in the house. Paula's there. Blake Teague. We're going to get to that thread. We're going to get to all of these things. And uh, first, all guys, girls, everybody, Cam, if you can walk, uh, <laughs> let's just say a little thanks to our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to jump in and show you guys what we're tying. We got some really cool announcements. We got some cool ideas and some really fun things for you guys. So uh, hold tight. In the heart of nature, when hunger strikes and time is of the essence, Morning View Mercantile has the solution. Witness how we redefine convenience. It's not just a meal, it's an experience. In mere moments, a feast emerges. Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition. How it goes? It's a little awesome anticlimactic. It's so like wham, wham, and then we're here and, then and we're drinking lazy beer. <laughs> well, it's pretty we're, good. I actually enjoy yeah. this beer. Yeah. Well, you're crushing it, so I would think you must enjoy it. Well, you got me started with the tequila. <laughs> all right. Anyways, uh, all's good in the hood. I figured out how to raise my mic. We talked about that, and Dustin, yeah, he got his kit. So awesome. Uh, welcome. Welcome back, Peking. Barrett Rutherford, Dave's dad from Oshawa. Welcome, Dave's dad. Whoa, Small up, problem. Toronto Maple Leafs game is still on. Well, I don't understand DB what the problem DBR is. DBR is uh, <laughs> don't believe ridiculousness. That's what you think? My dad's a diehard Maple Leafs fan. Maple Leafs. I just. Yeah, well, oh. I guess you're from out there. My dad's not from out there, but uh, Eric's there. Shore fishing. We, uh, yeah, so. Eric's the owner of Shore Fishing, and he's well, dropping up, in to say what's happening. So uh, we're super excited to have Shore Fishing back. Um, as we do, we've got some materials from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop that we're going to show you guys for uh, TechStream. They're the new distributor. And as well, we're always cutting thread, busting materials, <laughs> deep, sharp. Deep, sharp. On, on two sets of scissors, Shore scissors. <laughs> As well as what? Dana Scissors. Dana Scissors. <laughs> and they're brought to you by the uh, um, craft store yard. at the end, dollar store. <laughs> oh, yeah. Craft Beer says DBR is uh, Donald Barrett Rutherford. Oh. All right, folks. We like talked it. about it. Now we're going to show you it. 
just doing my best to get you guys all hooked up for it's probably not gonna work tim come on it's gonna work Ooh. entertainment news That's what I... Oh, <laughs> it worked? That was great. Yeah. Oh, I slowly I went everywhere oh, except man. where I was supposed to Expect be. Except for where you're supposed to be. Oh. Okay, there you we were go. so close <laughs> to being perfect. <laughs> uh, next time. Next time. Next time. Next time. I'm glad to is, have it back. It looks so good. Truth is... Yes. This is the truth is... <laughs> Oh, it, that was a statement. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. The truth uh, is. Before you go any further, make sure that you head over to the website and get your flying go cards because why, Tim? Well, you can't win any prizes without them. What do you mean? Well, your what flying prizes go, would your you prizes? win? Well, we got some giveaways here. What I'll show you what's up. I'll show you. Would you yeah. win? <laughs> Just give a guy a Tim, second. Tim, I'm here. just trying to find some new music here because. Uh, Okay, so we got some good giveaways going out. We're stacked up a bit from last week because last week, uh, well, they were sort of one and not one because uh, the wizard got them. Yeah, the wizard got them. So we got the bench Speak, boss coming at you. Speaking of which, what? It was Rick Flink's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. You know what we do when it's your birthday. I don't know what this is going to do. I haven't done it for a long Try time, it. but. There it is. Round of clicks for Mr. Rick Flink. I don't even know if he's watching he's tonight. He better be. Uh, but he's in his 70s, 72, 73. I don't know, but he had a birthday this week. So make sure you guys reach out to Mr. Rick Flink and say happy birthday, happy brother. Birthday. We are excited, happy, and glad to have you a part of this TNL fam. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Always, always celebrating every single year because we know it's an honor to be here. And mm -hmm. it's a privilege to get to wake up every single day. And when you when you start getting up there and collecting a lot of birthdays, it's even cooler. <laughs> and uh, that's awesome. So we want to wish you a happy birthday, Mr. Flink. Very happy And birthday. we appreciate you as a friend and a friend and a friend of the TNL fam. And most importantly, a part of the TNL fam. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. That's right. That's right. So. All okay. Right. Okay, let's just take a peek at what we got up for this evening. So this is what's going to be coming from Fly Ingo. That's why it's important you need to go get your card. Uh, so coming at you from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, we've got the Loon Bench Boss. So this is a, an awesome, speaking of dirty fly tying desk, this will help you organize it a little better. We also have a, I believe this is a 25, let me check it here. Yeah, $25 gift card from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. And just so everybody knows, there's enough gift. There's another gift card from Mr. Ken McCutcheon, oh. but it's not a part of that, Tim. Nope. It's a part of something else. Okay, we'll get to it. We've got a Loon Ergo Bobbin, also coming at you from Rock Mountain Fly Shop. And we got a couple of packages of true two mil foam from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, a couple of different colors. Uh, great for doing up some tie-in. And then we also have <clears throat> some stuff from Morning View Mercantile. We've got uh, their chili meal so that's it that's a good one. guys that. check it out at the bottom of the screen here you're gonna notice something it's a scrolling ticker and it says morning view mercantile okay they're now available at rocky mountain fly shop i highly suggest that you want items like this you head over to rocky mountain and get yourself some they've a vast majority of freeze-dried fruit which is honestly it's like cheating candy it is it's so good and then so this good. stuff. And we got more coming from them. So we've got uh, barbecued pulled pork. That's actually the my favorite. It's actually, all, all, and how do you get it going? You just boil a little water yeah. in your jet boil. You pour it in and you wait about five minutes. You probably saw it in the commercial. And that, it, we did it last year. We'll do it again. We did a taco night. And yeah. we use, we'll do pulled pork this year. With yeah, taco. I want pulled pork. Let's do it. Yeah. And we'll show you how we do it. Because we got space. We do have space. Uh, we got a couple of nice little desserts here. So we've got your gingerbread cookie ice cream sandwich. This one I haven't tried yet. Looks delicious. It's a chocolate chip cookie ice cream sandwich. And we have their old cheddar cheese, which this okay. I did try. Was yeah. So, so the cheddar the cheddar is better isn't always the truth. 
<laughs> the um, just, just fact. I think Eileen was in here. She's working at, at Morning View Mercantile this week. Want to say hi to Eileen? If you guys are in Red Deer, drop in and say hi to her as well. She's super sweet, and uh, she's holding down the fort while Claude, Claude, and Colleen are gone to the Floridas. Uh, but jealous. the cheddar, the I cheddar. love the cheddar. What does it taste like? <sighs> yeah. Ritz crackers, Rit- like strong Ritz yeah. crackers. So, but good. it's not for everyone. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like it. I, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got a uh, $25 gift card um, from Craft Beer Nation. So we'll go over Craft and get beer some uh, get some beer from Craft Beer Nation. Oh, we also have um, uh, a sun shirt. One of our new camo sun shirts that Cole's oh, wearing on the couch. People want that real bad. That Cole's wearing on the couch. And uh, so anyways, that's not a, the, those new sun shirts. How do you like that, Cole? We can't see you, but we hear you. It feels great. It's great camel. Big camel guy. I love these sun shirts. I wear them every single day in the summertime. Like, we wore them on our honeymoon out to Florida. Every single day I wore it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, looks so good, comfy. feel good, play good. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, that's kind of a gift you get when you come and sit here. Ken, Adrian, Cam, shut up. Your gift was our time. <laughs> we didn't have them yet. Uh, so anyways, that's how it goes. That's how it goes, folks. You can uh, win one of the sun shirts. You just let us know your size, and we'll throw one of those in. Yeah. If Given we have your size. So you got to get a flango card, and that's how you do it. You get a flango card, and you do that. All right, next important thing. Mr. Blake Teague was asking the question. Tonight's flies, which will be tied by Tim, is such a... As such, this. As such as this. Yeah, so we got a couple of good patterns coming at you tonight. So we've got the Thin Mint, which is going to be a streamer. Um, so building on some of the skills we used last week, we're going to be applying some of those to a streamer pattern. We're going to teach you a few new skills on the second fly, which is going to be the Slum Hopper. Um, you can see up there um, the thread. I'm recommending a little bit heavier thread for the streamer and for the hopper. Um, we don't want to cut the foam on the hopper, and we want to be able to put a little bit more tension when we're tying that streamer. So I've got up there a UTC 140. Um, which is going to be just a little bit heavier thread and you can see some color options there um, I think I'm going to do a dark brown on the first fly the streamer and I'm going to be using like a tan on the second fly But don't worry about the colors most colors are going to be applicable and We can explain that into the patterns, but you, that's what you can get ready for yourself and when we head over to the vice That's what we'll be using All right Well, yes. folks, being the fact that the wizard has brought all good things to this world I and he doesn't play fair. Ever. Any questions on the fly? I know somebody asked a question about a fly rod, a five weight and. Um, yeah, best five weight or go to. I can't remember. Yeah. The was. And that was. That uh, was there from, from down in uh, Coldale. Let's scroll back. I thought it was. Um, from, um, uh, yes, don't worry, Paul D. My jet boil has the proper pieces <laughs> uh, <laughs> this time. Uh, I want to uh, try some good sea chain straight edge, is delicious. And I stumbled upon it at Sobeys called Zero People's Dead. That's fantastic. That's people skills. Well, that's but people skills. Zero yes. people skills, the non alcoholic version. Same bingo cards as last week. I have a disgusting train wreck of music. So <sighs> sorry about that. Uh, I want to answer the question though. Joey said. Uh, Echo Carbon XL. Um, man, we're getting into the fly rod conversation. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a an good one. Orvis Recon is a fantastic five weight. Yeah. But ask yourself the question Is your five weight a smaller end of your fishing scale or the larger end of your fishing scale? So are you going to be using it to chuck thin mints? Mm. Are you going to be using it to nymph? Um, so then that kind of goes into like having a stronger. Uh, stiffer, fast action, and um, presentation. So presentation becomes, uh, I think, a little better rod is needed for something like that. Yeah. And then it's budget. First and foremost, it's yeah. budget. I think uh, budget is actually the first thing you got to come up with because then you can you can put uh, different rods of in it. Like if we had this conversation last year, actually thinking of the guide's corner, but we were talking yeah. about the fact that. Um, you know, a $400 rod versus a $1,200 rod, is there really that big a difference? Um, and most of the time, it has to do with where they're built and the warranty. And um, yeah. so yeah. sometimes, you know, you might have the $400 rod that's amazing, 
and you think it's it's awesome it works for you and that's all that matters right you don't you don't all have to be carrying helioses and you know the top in winston or or whatever um but yeah uh, Tough I, conversation. I guess to ask the question, um, Joey, and you don't have to cite it in public here, but just kind of more like uh, in the budget. Also, did you just pull your pants off? No, just down. They're getting a little righty. You know what I'm saying? Well, folks. No regrets. We're here for the ridiness. <laughs> well, you uh, raised me up. <laughs> so I got to pull them back down. <laughs> When you're down in the ditch, it's uh, a son of a... Uh, Any stitch. fool knows that you never get rich when you're down in the ditch, when you're way down in the ditch. Anybody know who sings that? I do. <laughs> uh, some people that are a few years older than Tim might know that song. I think I'm so young. I don't know. Yeah, well, you're like, what, eight, six, eight years older than me? It's not that big maybe. a difference. That's right. It's a good point. Yeah. Come okay. On. Super cool thing that we got going on right now, folks, is tonight's flies are gone because they're going to tie them. Just like that. Uh, the next fun thing that we need to know, seeing if anybody guessed that, uh, is this. Weekly qu- what is a weekly quiz? I like this. What is a weekly quiz, folks? Well, this week, folks, uh, this weekly quiz is quite simply 10 questions. There are always going to be 10 questions. This one talks about the flies. Okay. We're going to, we, we've been asked a few times about some education on some of this stuff. So we're going to educate you guys. And then what we need you to do is head over to our website, flyfishingbover.com backslash TNLS six. Like it says there. You're going to see something that says quiz. Take the quiz. You're going to go over and take the quiz. It's 10 questions. If you get 80%, okay, that's 8 out of 10. Is that 8 out of 10? It's 8 out of 10. You're going to get a <laughs> fraction of a photo. Oh. Don't, what, why, what does that well, matter? It's a coloring photo. Okay. And if you do the next 12 weeks and you get over 80%, you download all 12 of those photos and you're going to put it together Ooh. and then you're going to get a photo and then you're going to color this photo. And folks on our final episode, the $10,000 donation giveaway, we don't give away $10,000, but <laughs> somewhere stuff. in equivalent to prizes, um, you're going to have a chance to win some more things because you've got all 12 of these. You made the complete picture and you've colored it in. Nice. I like this a lot. So, yeah, head over there. And uh, this week is just about the flies because, you know, it's going to start a little easy. But the <laughs> wizard's brother. <laughs> oh, what's his name? Brizzard. Brizzard. <laughs> the Brozard. Oh, man. I bet uh, he's a real friendly guy. Too. Yeah. So what he does is the next few episodes are going to have snippets from the show. So you're going to have to, like, watch to understand. And oh. you can cheat. You can cheat. I always have room for cheaters here, and, uh, <laughs> but just how good are you going to feel at the end of the year? Probably just fine. Anyway, so yeah, so it's just like this. Uh, I'll help you out. Um, the Thin Mint, which we're about to tie, how does it imitate the behavior of natural prey? Well, I would say it mimics the erratic fleeing motion of a wounded or distressed prey. Well, <laughs> I got it right. What? I didn't build the questions. Uh-huh. And sure. this could take us to our next one. And then, guys, I'm helping you out. You see how I'm helping you here? And then it's like, what type of aquatic prey does the Thin Mint fly primarily, primarily in, imitate? I bet it's a bait fish. Well, let's try it out. Let's, let's see. Oh, yeah. And that's right. And then we say, what primary reason grasshoppers end up in rivers and streams? Besides having uh, itch, <laughs> I was gonna say. Itch, uh, <laughs> diseases that we talked about. <laughs> yeah. Well, they get blown or fall into the water due to wind or accidental jumps. So where would you find them in the river? Near the grass. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, that's right. Look at that. So I'm not going to answer all the questions, but if you've been following along, you're going to find that, uh, well, grasshoppers are abundant and readily available during the summer months is also a true answer. Ah, yes. Um, is there's not a way back if you missed a week? There's not. No. Nope. And so we're starting with tonight. 
And so there'll be 12. So there's 12 photos to make the complete image. And um, just so you know, go ahead over there, fill out the quiz. And I don't know which day, but it'll probably end in uh, D-A-Y. Like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, that the quiz will go down and there'll be a new quiz up. Right, 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 right. So just... But prop. Thursday and Friday end in day two. And, and Saturday. Yeah, well, there'll be a new one. And they, all, they all do, Tim. So how That's do we know? The, you don't know. Oh, you just got to make sure right that away. I will at least give you tomorrow <laughs> to do this. So cool things about the quiz. They're over there. I highly suggest that you go and do them. Not to, well, you don't, maybe you know some of the answers, but you need 80% to pass. Yep. Uh, cheaters are welcome. <laughs> so I already see people are doing the quiz right now. All right. Okay. So we got one more thing before we get into tying what? The Thin Mint. The Thin Mint. Well. Yes. I have four. Coming I know old. what's happening tonight in Calgary in the minus 500s. Um, but what I need you guys to do before I show the trailer for I have four is um, share, share this. Share it on your Facebook. You can share it wherever you share it, because sharing is caring. Right? Sharing is caring. It's true. Cole said this earlier. But what we need you to know is like and subscribe if you're on YouTube, because that matters, because you're going to get all these videos that pop up, and they're just going to really help you out in your fly fishing journey. So uh, head on over, like and subscribe or YouTube, share this on Facebook, go take the quiz, or hang out with us as we watch... The IF4 trailer. Official it's going to be in Olds on March 23rd at 12 p.m. It is truly the last film festival that's left. And we've been really? doing this. Yeah. will be our third year. And, I, and I'm and i pretty sure this year will be sold out uh, <clears throat> because it just kept building and building. And so we do this at noon. Uh, typically, we're over at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop beforehand having pancakes and, and hanging out there. And then we head over. We walk to the theater. It's like about 25 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. We watch the show from noon to two, and then we head over and we go to Tracks Pub. And then we're there to, and it's a really fun way to meet a lot of uh, people here. So if you're not from the area, why don't you fly up for the weekend? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so let's happen. watch this video. What's wrong? Wrong button. But so <laughs> this is the buttons. right button. <laughs> pretty good whatever it is it's exciting and it's coming to olds uh on march 23rd mayfair cinema mayfair cinema you know what that means we're so all out of news <sighs> no but i like the news we're all i know we do it so <laughs> fun <laughs> why is the news oh, always gone we're all out of news it's like the rum it's always gone and uh this isn't tim see they switched again on us tim that's what happened. I'm not Tim. I'm not Tim. And it switched. Anyways, Tim's over here. <laughs> Actually, Tim's over here. Let's switch him out here. Go like this. Look. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> hey, Trish, what is that? Just it's... hang on. Don't leave that because I got to <laughs> fix this. Because I'm not you as well. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah, look at that. Oh, you're in again. Dang it. <laughs> Would you just turn the screen off one time? Oh, yeah. 
I also have to make sure that I switch this one because you know what that means. We just had a few te technical difficulties. Zin is not a sin. <laughs> well, Cole, a sin is being an empty cup. So I actually, I'm not even in the screen anymore, Tim. How about that other Mac? Oh, there it is. He got me. All right. Okay, folks. Well, let's uh, let's let's talk about the Thin Mint. So, <clears throat> but actually, just before we talk about the Thin Mint, something we want to discuss a little bit, kind of in review each week, is we want to know: um, Are there things from last week that you struggled with in the flies? If there's techniques that we want to, you know, go over again. If there's materials that you found frustrating and you want to discuss how to maybe better um, work with them. Whatever it is, drop it in the comments because we are um, we're very curious to know that stuff. We want to know um, how to improve, how to help you better learn certain techniques, or how to work with certain materials. So I know last week, um, with I think the flies themselves were fairly simple, but unfortunately some of the materials weren't super easy. So for instance, when we were working with this uh, squirmy worm stuff, it was kind of frustrating because I think for a lot of you, just like myself. Working with it, especially when you palmer it, can be um, can be tough because it doesn't always want to wrap as it should up the fly. So when once I finish this thin mint, I'm going to show you um, real quick a fly that I did up after of uh, another squirmy worm pattern that also um, encompasses the same ideas but can actually make your life a little bit easier. And it actually uses less material, which is, is also kind of a bonus. So you actually come out with maybe more of this squirmy worm material at the end. Um, that to you so uh, we'll, we'll get to that here in a second so if you're tying out of your season six kit uh, go on over um, pick up your season six episode two um, you're gonna have two packages in the back one of them has foam in it you can see right away and then one of it has a lot of material in it which is gonna be the thin mint um, so go ahead let's get that open together because that one actually has quite a bit of material so get it separated out there's quite a few materials we're gonna put into this fly um, Although this isn't an overly difficult pattern to tie, there is a lot of pieces that move um, move through it, but a lot of techniques that we're going to kind of... Quick repeat. question. Yeah. Oh, oh so close. <laughs> Everything's... I meant to go there. Yeah. You're on your own, kid. That's what you meant to do. You're on your own. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. my goodness. <laughs> okay, so before we actually get tying, because I have the camera here right now, I'm going to show you this other scrum yeah. board. So... We kind of talked about it. Yes, some of the materials were kind of tough last week with that squirm mirror material, but here's a good option. So in comparison to what we did last week, which was palmering that squirmy worm up the body, take a look at this, okay? This is very simple. I've done the same thing. I've pulled that material through the bead, just like I've done the other one. Um, and I just literally wrapped it back and tied it off right there. That's the last time I had to work with that material. And then all I did was I came back with some um, some nice pink dubbing and just made a dubbing body. And one of the reasons I actually prefer this method, other than it's easier to tie, is that when you catch a fish on it, you're probably gonna get more than one. Because as soon as one of those Palmer wraps gets bit by a tooth or something, it's probably gonna unravel. Whereas this is gonna be a little more durable. So keep that in your, um, in your toolbox and maybe come back to those flies and, uh, and take a stab at it in that form. There's lots of different why, or ways to tie each pattern. Um, this is just one of those ways that's a little different than, than we did last week, so keep that in mind. Okay, so let's let's get back to the Thin Mint. So we got a lot of materials here. Let's uh, open up the kit. So it should look like this. Get in there. What we're gonna have for materials in here, so I'll kinda, kinda list them off. So what we have is we're gonna be tying a tail out of Marabou. And we're actually gonna have three different uh, three different colors of marabou this week. So this this thin mint is tied kind of in the in the style of a woolly bugger with a little bit of twist. And the twist is gonna be um, the extra marabou in the tail and the counter wrapped uh, rib, which is gonna be um, some flash material. So there's there's definitely a few different things going on. And then the body is actually built out of peacock curl. So we've got peacock curl, we've got marabou, we've got a hackle feather, and we've got some wire. And then we have that flash rib. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our bag that's got our beads and our hooks. And let's go ahead, get those staples out of the bag. We're gonna grab that hook. And just like we did with the squirmy worm last week when we attached 
uh, the bead and the hook, we want to do the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and stick, you'll, you'll notice on a bead, it's kind of hard to show you on here, but there is a, that's the small hole side and then there's a big hole side. And we want to put the small hole side, we want to put the hook point through that smaller hole. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll stick it on there, slide it down so it's sitting nicely like that, okay? That's how we're gonna start. Now I want you to go and organize your materials if you haven't already. Make sure you got your different colored marabou separated so you got those ready to go. Um, for the purpose of what we're gonna tie right away here, we're just gonna use one of each color. So let's start off with the fact that this fly can be weighted or unweighted. So you do have a bead, but that's not super heavy. Um, we also gave you in there some lead wire, uh, lead wire wrap. So I'm just gonna take a short piece of it, maybe just over an inch long. The stuff can be cut or broken. It breaks pretty easy. And I'm just gonna start off before I ever put thread on here or anything, I'm gonna put this on. So how I do that is I'm gonna kind of lay it up against uh, the hook. I'm gonna grab that longer tag end and I'm just gonna do some wraps. Now I'm not gonna use this whole piece cause I'm not gonna make this one super heavy, but the more wraps you do, obviously the heavier it's gonna be. So I'll finish off just the front side of this, push it up against the bead. And then I'm gonna leave, uh, I'm gonna cut out that little tag with my dull scissors, don't use sharp ones here. And then the key to this is getting that kind of, that tag you can see is sticking up a little bit. We wanna get that pressed down uh, with a fingernail or the edge of the scissors, whatever you gotta do to push it down. You wanna do that on the front and the back, okay? So we're gonna get that basically um, situated like so. Now, like I said earlier, um, for thread, I'm gonna be tying with a 140 uh, denier and I'm gonna be doing a dark brown on this one. So it's gonna be in this kind of color. Black would be great, olive would be great as well, okay? <clears throat> now at any time, guys, don't forget you have the option of SOS, which means just drop SOS in the comments. We're gonna stop what we're doing real quick and we're gonna let you catch up, or if you have a question or whatever, um, we really want you to have the ability to tie with us on Thursday. I know some of you guys just sit back and enjoy watching and whatever, but there are people who tie and we wanna make sure that you're getting the opportunity to keep up. So if you need me to slow down or you need anything answered, just take that second and uh, let us know, okay? Just a second. Just a second. And that just screwed everything up. But that's to keep everybody on their toes. <laughs> Back to Dana. Darren again. Smith asked a question. All right, Darren. Do you cut the loop off or use them? Oh, I never cut them. Use them. Use them. Use the loops. Always use the loops. I mean, don't use them. Tell me why you don't use them. Yeah. I know some people have concern about strength of them, but I mean, they're a welded loop created by, I don't think you're going to make it tight better than it is. I've never had one come apart, Tim. No, me either. No. Good question, though. Questions don't have to be fly tying related, so keep them coming if you have questions, okay? All right, well, let's start the thread on the hook. Okay, so just like we talked about last week, um, normally we would start up kind of right behind the bead, but because we want that wire to be pinched up um, against the bead, we're gonna start that thread just behind the bead, or sorry, behind the thread, the lead. And we'll just work it back a little bit, and we'll go in there with our nice sharp shore shitters. We'll trim that out. And now all I wanna do is I want to place some thread wraps kind of all over top of that thread. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna prevent that from sliding around. I don't want it to slide back down too far. I want it to be up there pretty tight. I, I like to have a little bit of space between the bead and the wire at the front, simply because it allows me to finish off because I'm gonna put a lot of wraps up at the front. So it's gonna build up a little bulky. So the first thing I wanna do is kind of take a big wrap over top and come in right here, and just kind of prevent it from going forward. But I want it to stay just that little bit of space. Otherwise, I don't want it to move. So I'm gonna use uh, the root. Just wait. Yeah. Question from Dewey. Dewey. What brand of Marabou do you use? Um, well, if I had a choice, it would probably be MFC. They kind of have the best options and color options. Yeah. Um, but most of the hackle or smart sorry, most of the Marabou that we have available to us here is made or it comes through a distributor of hook and hackle. Um, so most of the stuff we see up here is hooking tackle. I'm not sure. Shore, Shore's been doing good on their Maribou. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's a funny question. It's not a funny question. Yeah. I'm disappearing in the abyss <laughs> here. Uh, it's a good question. And sometimes 
I think just maybe Dewey just answer like what to you makes it crappy and then we can yeah. kind of work through that. And there, there, I think what you need to realize is it doesn't matter what package of marabou you buy, there's going to be a percentage of waste. You're never going to have a perfect, all the feathers are going to be perfect, um, <clears throat> but you can always find a use for those ones that aren't great. So I wouldn't throw them out, but you're right. I, I'm with you. There are a lot of packages. There's some that are, are not so good. So, Okay, I'm going to get some thread wraps on top of this lead. I'm going to use the rotary function on the vise. So I'm just going to spin it up, cover it a little bit. I'm not worried about the color showing through. I'm just worried about it moving. So once I've got a little bridge on either side, I'm going to take my thread back. And I want to use that hook point as a guide. So, sorry, the hook barb as a guide. So when I... My tie-in point for all these three marabous is going to basically be right at that hook point or hook barb. So I'm just going to let my thread lay there so I know where it is. <clears throat> so the very first color we're going to tie in is going to be uh, this olive colored marabou. So I'm going to grab myself a plume of that. Okay, so I've got a plume here. Now what I want you to do is kind of grab the feather down by the stem. Run your fingers up so you pull the tips together. It might help if you moisten your fingers a little bit to kind of control it because some of them can kind of be wonky. And I'm just going to pull it down like this till I get to where the, the tips look really thin, right about there. Now, I don't want to cut those off because what that's going to do is make like a straight line. I actually want to take the edge of my scissor, okay? So if I laid my scissor up against it and I'm going to press my thumb over top of it, grip it on the bottom and just break those pieces off. So it's not a perfect straight edge when it's done but you can see how much more full that plume looks be versus before because those, those tips were quite thin. So I'm gonna do that on this one. We're gonna do it on all three pieces that we do. So then I'm just gonna lick my finger, put a little bit of moisture on this guy, kind of control it a bit. And then I'm gonna measure off the hook shank itself. So I'm gonna look for that full, um, I'm basically just bracing off the hook eye to measure how long I want this. So I would say start at having a full hook shank in length. You could add a little, so I'll add, I'm gonna add maybe a quarter to a half more so it hangs off the back a little bit. And then I'm gonna transfer that measurement with my fingers holding it to my tie-in point. And then I'm gonna switch hands. I'm gonna kind of pinch it in place so that it can't move. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a gathering wrap. So this first wrap's kind of a loose one just to grab the material. I'm gonna start to tighten it down, take a second one a little bit tighter third one, tightest. And then what I'm gonna do is because I have a little bit of, um, you can see under, under, on the underside there, I have a bit of, you know, a difference in the width of the hook because of that lead wire. I'm just gonna take this and put a few wraps forward on top of it. Then I'm gonna lift it vertical and trim it out. And then after every one of these we put in, we basically wanna go back over top and just lay some thread wraps down, try to smooth it out. Although this is called the thin mint, it ends up being kind of the thick mint because you are putting a lot of marabou in this one. So it's gonna feel a little thicker than per se, um, maybe you think it should. Um, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab a brown one. So we're gonna do the same thing over again, but with a brown marabou plume. So I'm gonna again, pull my fingers down, find those thin tips, go in there with my scissors, brace over my thumb and tear them. until I get them about like that. Add a little bit of moisture. And when we're, we're actually stacking this marabou, so we want them to stay the way they are. So when I stack it on top, if I were to just kind of loosely do this with it, you could see it would fold around the other one. I actually want to keep it fairly corded up in my hand so that when I tie it in, I'm tying it right in on top and it's not going to move. So you see me pinching it tight here. I'm going to measure it off the other one, match the measurement, switch hands, I'm gonna pinch it right up on top so it can't go anywhere around the edges, and then I'm gonna take a, that same thread wrap cycle, one loose one, tighter and tighter. Okay, so I'm left with that. So we got kind of a bit of a creamsicle situation happening here. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, take a few thread wraps forward, and I'll trim it out again. And take some more thread wraps over top just to kind of even that out. And then I'm gonna again bring my tying point back to that hook barb. So when it's laying down, it's pretty much at the barb. And now we're just gonna do that one more time. And we're gonna go ahead and grab a black marabou plume. 
And you basically can get two flies out of each of these because what I don't need all, all of this, so I'm actually kind of pulling some down. So when I cut it out, I'm left with a chunk of it at the bottom that I can just retie in again, just like I am doing with the tip here. So I'm gonna pull down, get the tips that I need. You can see them again there. I'm gonna pull my fingers up to the tips, break those thin tips off. Left with that. And I'm gonna take those guys and I'm gonna measure just the same length that I did before and lay that black one right on top so it's fairly even. The other ones, same process, pinch down nice and hard so that it can't go down below the hook or around the hook. And same thing, a little bit of a lighter one, tighter one, third one's the tightest, take a few wraps forward. Then I'm gonna lift that vertical and trim it out. Now at this point, I'm just gonna go take a few more thread wraps and I'm kinda even this out a little bit. I'm gonna even out that bit of a hump that's there. It's not gonna be perfectly even, but I just don't want it to be a sharp decline because then it's uh, the material might wanna roll when we put in the next stuff. So at this point, this would be something that you're left with. You should have that green, brown, and black st stacked on top of itself. And then we're basically, we're gonna move on to tying in three materials that we're then gonna bring forward up the fly. Um, Why don't we just take a head. break right there? Yeah, Tim, just watch just take a bit of a break. Make sure everybody's caught up. I would love to join the image. Like this, but see, you're still in the wrong spot. I'm in the wrong spot. Everybody's in the wrong spot. <laughs> the wrong camera turned on at the wrong Maybe time. Maybe I should just write a storybook. Talk sure. about how this day <laughs> there was two Tims. Two Tims. I'm two Tim and Dana. <laughs> Welcome. No, not for long. Why Tim. do I look whiter over there than I look over there? That's, that's the problem. I'm so pale. Jeez. All right, a questions time. It's a question period. We've got our mayor boots hat in, and maybe perhaps your my mic isn't your working. Shank. By the way, it is, it's working. It's working. I'm checking it out over there. It's working just fine. It's exceptional. Just, just want to let everybody know that I just try to. A retro styles from Analog Brewing, and it's a cream ale. Uh, How is it? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Do you ever watch? Uh, Cole might follow this guy, but it's old fashioned, old fashioned hockey. Yeah, he does. Yeah. It's kind of sounds a bit like this. Just gonna take a little drink over here. Sipsky. Maybe what I should do is just take some time out. Just have a just have a little time with me and you guys. I can answer some of your questions. <laughs> I've turned Tim and Cole off. I think what's beautiful about this is sometimes even though everything's so busy and Tim's busy and Cole's shirt's very busy. <laughs> Part is the cordless mic, so I can yeah. come join you. Yeah. And sometimes, I don't know, get back here. Sometimes <laughs> Tim comes over here while we're having a uh, question time. <laughs> we, can, we can just give ourselves a little bit of a trap massage. Oh, doesn't that feel wonderful? Doesn't that feel wonderful? You got friends. You got friends like I do right here, and Cole's right there. And it's minus 50 out, and Cole made his way up here, folks. And, uh, Tim showed up with a flat of beer from Friends of Craft Beer Nation, and Tim's got three different colors of marabou tied in, and he's got some lead. He likes to put lead in there. I don't, because there's something called the GB Jiggle, that the lead doesn't really quite work. Oh, anyways, questions are about the marabou, and the answer is there's a lot of crap marabou in marabou. You just got to take it for what it is. If you guys don't have any more questions, well, Dana and uh, Dana and you time, it's come to an end. All right. Anyways, maybe what we should do is head back over to Tim. If it's actually Tim. It's me. Oh, at last. Okay, guys. Well, we've made some progress on this fly. Um, 
let's get to it. There's This is probably what would be the more complicated um, end of the fly is the body section, um, but we're gonna take it in nice and easy and slow and we'll get through it. So the sequence here is gonna be, we're gonna tie in our wire, um, sorry, our uh, flash first, then our wire and then our hackle, and then we're gonna one by one bring them up the fly. So if you're digging around in your kit, let's find a piece of flash, okay? Like so, okay? Now, before we tie this into Palmer, we're gonna put some flash in the tail because this really helps kind of liven up the fly. So I'm gonna start off by placing some on this side and I want it to be basically right on the lateral edge of the hook shank. So if I put it right there, okay, you're gonna see it's gonna flash right through that marabou. I'm gonna pinch it down with my finger. I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna take, uh, take a thread wrap around it. If I can get it to cooperate. Like so. So I take my hand off. It's kind of bent up because of the shape of it, but it's gonna sit right back into there. Take a couple thread wraps so it doesn't move. I'm gonna trim that out. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna come to my side now. I'm gonna put another piece in and we want that to extend back to the back of the tail, roughly somewhere in there. If you're holding it down, you should be able to tell. And we will tie that in on this side. And we wanna take it all the way to the tie, the tie in point where we were up here by, that, uh, by the hook barb put it right there and then we can go ahead and trim it out. You can trim it out or what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it tied in like there and I'm just going to fold it back over because we're going to use this so you can either uh, cut it out and retie it in or just fold it back over almost like we're putting a long tail on it and this is just going to stay back over here and uh, we're going to use this in just a moment. So I'm going to just get that out of the way and then I'm going to go find my next material in your kit there which should be some uh, some wire of course I've got a mess on my desk so I gotta try to find mine um, and that wire is gonna kind of be balled up a little bit something like that just pull yourself a strand of it it's a few inches long don't need a super long piece for each fly sometimes it's easier if you leave it a little longer to work with um, I'm gonna kind of pull it to make sure it's kind of straightened out and I'm gonna tie that in right back where everything else has been tied in Make sure that's down, not moving. And then we just have one more material, well, two more materials technically, but one more that we're gonna palmer up. We're gonna go ahead and grab our, a hackle feather. So you're gonna see, you're gonna have a few of them in your kit. It'll look something like this. And this is what we're gonna make, uh, kind of the bulkiness of the fly out of is gonna be this. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pull your fingers down the stem stand up we call them the barbs we want to stand those up so we can see them so that helps us find the underside of the fly so the dull colored side is going to be the underside and you can kind of see like a, a concave the underside of the concave is going to be um, the underside so when i take that take it like so you can see the undersides right here i'm going to tie in so it's pointed back down the fly slightly so that when i go to start palmering this forward it's gonna be in a natural orientation and start moving up the fly the way I want it to so that the barbs are pointed in the right direction. So I'm just gonna go ahead right there and tie that in. So you can see the underside right there is pointed back down the fly. And then I'm gonna really secure this in because I want it to be nice and tight. So I'm gonna probably wrap up a little ways and then I can trim out that little bit of stem. So I don't want that to be able to go anywhere because if that comes undone at the back or the front, it's a real pain in the butt. I'll bring it back to here. I'll give you guys a second to do that. And then really the next thing we're gonna be looking for is gonna be um, that peacock curl we talked about. And yes, we may have overdone the peacock curl <laughs> in each kit. You have a ton of it, okay? So for each fly, we're basically gonna use four to five pieces. So go ahead and pull out kind of the longest strands you can find in that bunch. This is really kind of a hard material to package, so we just give you as much as we can, so, because we know some of it's not super usable. But I want you to go find four to five pieces and match up the tips. So the tips are kind of lined up, so I've got three of them right there. I'm gonna add a couple more, get those lined up. And this is gonna actually build the body of the fly. So there's a fifth one. 
anywhere from four to five. You could go a little bulkier, it's, it's up to you. I find that the kind of that magic number for me is a four or five. Once I got the tips fairly aligned like this, I actually wanna pinch down just about a half an inch. And I'm gonna break those off, okay? They just break right off. So the tips of marabou are very fragile, or sorry, the tips of peacock curl. And peacock curl in general is very fragile. So we don't, uh, that's why we're gonna counter wrap that wire because that's gonna give it some strength. So I'm gonna pull it back, find the tips of the peacock, okay, like this. And I'm gonna tie those in. This will be the last material we tie in at the back. I'm gonna tie that in right there as well. Work that forward. And again, just maybe do a little bit of evening out here. And I'm gonna bring it right back to that same tie-in point. Now, I'll show you real quickly. If I weren't, if I didn't bring my thread back up there and I started palmering this forward, watch kind of what happens with the marabou. So you see right there, even that first wrap, they all wanna come apart and they don't wanna to wrap together. So if I bring my thread, this is actually a really neat trick, but if you bring your thread back to the tie-in point and just let it hang, now, when I go to do my first wrap, I wrap around and I gotta make sure I always stay behind my thread. Now, my thread has just worked as a natural like blocker. So it, it's actually keeping all that peacock curl together. You can see the pressure on that thread, keeps the peacock curl stacked on top of itself and allows me to start palmering it forward and it doesn't spread it out. So it's kind of a neat trick to do with, uh, with peacock curl because sometimes it wants to kind of do its own thing. So just like this, I'm just gonna palmer this forward. Palmer just means wrap. So I'm just gonna wrap this forward towards the bead. I'm gonna get to just behind the bead, leaving just a tiny bit of space. And then I'm gonna do um, my securing wrap. So when we finish off a material, we're always gonna go behind the material, in front of the material, behind the material, in front of the material. And that's gonna get it nice and locked down. You just do it a couple times until you feel it's good and secure. And then I can just go ahead and I can trim that out. And now you see all that underbody that was a little bit different size and whatever, it kind of gets masked by this material. So it gets hard to see, which is exactly kind of what we're hoping for. So a couple no. questions. Yeah, let's do it. Um, one was what jaws are those from Corey Smith? Yeah, so these are actually the shank jaws that Norvice makes. Um, I can honestly say I've never tied a shank in them but they are probably my favorite vise, uh, jaws for my vise because it gives me lots of access into the bend and they're completely in line. I find them a little, little easier to use with smaller hooks as well, but I just end up like using them for everything. That's what they are. And then Mr. Troy Tracy said, do you ever twist the hurl with your thread to make it stronger? Yes, and that's a great option to do if you don't have the plan um, to bring wire back over top of it. So that's a great thing, Troy. Um, that's what we should do if we didn't if the pattern didn't call for a wire to come forward you would actually twist it around your thread and then your threads kind of worked in between the hurl so when you wrap it forward you would just wrap it with your thread and the, the hurl would be attached to your thread and that gives it the extra strength so but great point yeah beauty beauty mm -hmm. okay i think we're good i think we're good all right well now we're gonna bring three materials back towards the head. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the hackle because that's gonna be the main body and then we're gonna lock that down with the next two materials. But first off, I'm gonna do that little half hitch we talked of before. So I just place two fingers on my thread. I kind of wrap the thread around my finger and it makes an X. And I just place that X behind the bead and pull that down. That's just an overhand knot, that's all it is. And that is like the save button, just saves your work. It also, because I have a bobbin cradle, you don't have to if you wanted to, you could just leave your thread hanging here. But to get it out of the way for myself, I just set it over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, my hackle. Now, I wanna remember to orient this so that the underside is back down the fly. That's gonna how I wanna wrap it. So I orient it with the first couple of wraps to make sure that happens. And then I'm just gonna palmer this nice and evenly back down the fly. So you kinda just gotta play with it a bit to get the first couple of wraps going. And then it's just an open spiral. That's all we're doing, going back down the fly. I'm gonna kind of work the hackle out because I don't want too many of those fibers to get trapped in. So I'm just kind of pulling the fibers to make sure they stand up. And I'm gonna work that all the way to the head of the fly. And you can do those uh, these wraps as tight or as far apart as you want. Um, you're just gonna create more drag in the water the more you have. 
and the less you have it's going to be less drag and less probably buggy or bulky looking and then once I get up to the head I want to do one full complete circle wrap so that I make sure I encompass an entire turn at the head and that would be basically our collar and now I bring my thread back and just like I did with the peacock curl I'm going to go behind once in front once behind once front once. And then once I get to this point, what I like to do to kind of control the hackle from where it is, I like to pull it all back with my fingers, expose the bead, and just do a couple more wraps right in front. So there we go. That's, that's actually probably the hardest part of this is getting that to lay down properly as you bring it forward. And if it doesn't quite look right before you tie it off, that's fine. Just let it unwind and then rewind it again. You'll get it to to go the way you want. But you can see why it's important to have the underside pointed back because now all the fibers on that hackle naturally want to point backwards and they're not fighting the water. They're going to work with the water when they move. Okay. Okay. So now it's actually pretty simple from here. We have two more materials to bring forward. So I'm going to first start with my wire is this is what's going to make, um, it's going to make my hackle secure and my peacock curl, um, nice and secure on the hook itself. So I'm going to do, do another little half hitch just to save that and to get that out of the way. And now when you wrap this forward, I'm going to go the opposite way that I went with the hackle. So if the hackle was going this way, this time I'm going to go the opposite way. And as I move through the hackle, I just need to wiggle that wire. I wiggle it back and forth. And what that's doing is it's preventing me from trapping too many of those little barbs on the hackle. And this is just a nice open spiral. It's not going to be near as many turns as the hackle was. This is just holding down and securing all that material. And I work it through all the way to the head. And once I get to the head, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did last time. I'm gonna come in behind and then in front, behind and in front. And now either grab your best friend's scissors or you can helicopter that off just by wiggling it a bunch. And I'm just gonna trim it out. Once I get to this point again, I'm gonna pull that hackle back, do a couple wraps to make sure that wire is for sure not going anywhere. And this is what I'm left with right now. Okay. Now the last, very last thing we're going to do is the exact same thing I just did, but we're going to do it with the flash. So I'm going to do my little half hitch, save my work. I'm going to grab my flash and I'm going to take the flash the same direction that I did the wire. So this is still a counter wrap and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth as I go. This one is likely going to unfortunately trap a little bit of hackle. So you just kind of got to wiggle it the best you can. It's a little harder. It doesn't maneuver quite as well as the, as the wire did, but just try to evenly space out the flash as you move it forward, wiggle it through, try not to trap too much, all the way up to the head. And then I'm going to bring this thread back. I'm going to do the same tie off procedure I did before, behind in front, behind in front. And then I can go ahead and I can trim out that flash. And just like I did the last time, I'm gonna grab all of that material. I'm gonna pull it back and I'll take a couple more wraps. And then I can just kind of go and play with the hackle a bit, try to spruce it up, make it, feel, make it look like it's even, but likely you're gonna have trapped some of it down with that kind of bigger flash. You don't really want to go into it with a brush per se because you're likely going to tear that flash. But I like to come in here even with a little bodkin or, or a little, um, any little pin or anything. You can kind of pick around and you'll be able to pick a little bit of it out, but just pick in between the wraps of the flash. You don't want to pick, um, you don't want to pick on top of the flash because you're likely going to grab some of it and it might tear it. So once I get to that point, let me do just a little more I see trap. All I got to do is I'm going to whip finish this, um, whip finish this fly and it's pretty much done. So I'm going to grab my whip finish tool. Remember I come in, I'm going to stab the thread with the, the hook side. I'm going to wrap it around the back side, let it fold, come vertical. You should see that you got a, it's hard to see in that camera, but I have a four that crosses and I'm just going to do three wraps, slide it down off the hook, pull it tight. I'll go in there and trim out that thread. And then I'm just gonna grab just a little bit of UV resin and I'm just gonna touch the underside of those threads just so that they can't go anywhere. 
I'll cure it. And I know that that's not gonna slip out on me. And then take a look at your fly. You got your flash in the back. A couple Put questions and yeah. a couple questions that are similar. All right, let's hear What it. if you tied the flash in before the hackle? Before the hackle? Yeah, you could. It would trap less for sure. Um, for the most part, I mean, we're, we're not stuck to it, but we are following the recipe of how these originally are tied. Um, but you're right. You would trap less if you did that. So you wouldn't have to really go around and, and pick around at it and try to get it. I think you should put a little more resin on there. A little more resin? Just to make hillbilly happy. Just a, just a smidge? Just a smidge. All right. Put just a bit on there. He just wants a little more. Uh, the fly is effective. It is a very effective fly. Without oh. the flash, because I'm telling you, I've lost this flash so many times. Yeah, the flash comes out. And off. that, my friends, is Rosina. What's up, girl? She comes out when the resin comes out. She does. She's been around for a while. Yeah, she's she's done a lot of work on this show. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's your thin minute, guys. Um, one of the original styles of this pattern was actually tied with a pink bead. Um, I fished them both this summer quite a bit. I wouldn't say I found one more effective than the other, um, but it's a, another cool idea. Throw the pink on, we definitely caught fish on it. And then we do tie this articulated. So we'll tie this as an articulated fly where there's gonna be a front and a back. So your fly is gonna be quite a bit longer. And uh, I wouldn't say it's our favorite fly, Tying but them together. it's pretty, pretty darn good. Well, I wouldn't say it's our favorite fly, but it's one of them. It sure is a favorite. There is your thin mint, guys. Great pattern. Suggest you definitely tie up all that you can with the materials you have and give it a, give it a rip this summer. You're probably going to find some success on it. All right. There we go. Oh, there it is. Just when you thought you couldn't have enough. The bacon cam. Oh, oh that looks good. Well, there is an apple cinnamon crumble. I thought we were wearing our costumes on the poster. Well, I didn't get the memo. Yeah. I was like, dress up like your poster today. So you're in a flashy green hat in a bathrobe? Well, that's all I could find, Tim. <laughs> Be okay? honest. Is it your bathrobe? No. <laughs> My bathrobe is under this bathrobe. Oh, I see. And truthfully, our friends at Friesen Brothers are excited to give us some apple cinnamon crumble and rhubarb strawberry pie. And that you know what that means? Good. I just cracked open this beer. It's pretty much, I don't know if it's going to pair up nicely with that apple, apple cinnamon crumble. Why not? Because I'm a rhubarb fan. Oh, well, that's, I'm an apple fan, so. Yeah. Well, Rubarbs all you. I guess what we'll do is uh, eventually we're going to go over here, make sure everybody's got their flango cards. Okay, it's your last chance for flango because we're going to play flango here before we jump into the slum hopper. And uh, yeah, so the Thin Mint is fantastic. We already went over some of the questions and the answers that you need to know about this Thin Mint. So very good. Oh, there, there is, he is. OQP the couch cam. in the studio. That's him, Cole, Cl Cole Clayton. He calls himself Cole Clayton. We got to call him Papa Clayton. He wants his microphone on. It's on. <laughs> daddy. The big daddy. So Allison was asking the question, if he is the couch guy, did we call you Mr. Couch Guy? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Couch, couch Guy. guy. She wants to be Mrs. Couch Girl. Is that what it was? Mrs. Couch Guy? I don't know. Yeah. What it what it looks like is that you're in like a five hundred foot studio over there. <laughs> it does. It's sure amazing. feels like it compared to the old studio. Yeah. It's a beautiful. If you guys want to come up, sit on the couch cam, you are more than welcome. So much room for activities. So much room for activities. <laughs> Got room for bunk We're beds. gonna make bunk beds. Yeah. We should. Right. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. Tim, yeah. Where's your costume? I don't okay. have a costume. I didn't get the memo. Even I had the memo. Oh. So I get left out once again. All right. I'll have to get back on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And if you're feeling left out this year and you want to sponsor the costumes, <laughs> just get a hold of me. Reach out and say uh, how much you would like to put into the costumes. Because we do have a few costume nights coming up. What are costume nights? Well, they're nights that we dress up in costumes. Yes. And you do as well. I haven't told Tim about this, but I'm telling him right now. What's that? One of the nights is uh, black. What did I call it? It's called. It's not appropriate. It's already started bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's blackface. We're all going to get canceled. <laughs> uh, no, it's like black lights and and like all the color. Oh. Like I bought a bunch of glow in the dark paint. So just like semen recognition. <laughs> well, if we you can't, have, we can't if do you that have a big here. stripe on your face like a, a zebra. <sighs> Won't be able to show the couch. <laughs> I don't want to see the couch after that night. <laughs> Thank God I'm here today. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it happened before tonight. Uh, you jazz, never know. Jazz. Oh, man. Not good. Uh, it is Captain Clutch on the couch, and he might rescue you folks. It's doubtful. We don't know. He's no. sort of Captain Clutch. Like a camo still Captain Still don't Clutch. know. Still don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, so we're going to tie some flies. One more, the slum hopper. And uh, first and foremost, what we need to do is get over to the bingo. Yeah. So before I head over to the bingo, I need to switch my screen. I need to hop over here. And you guys are, oh, we're wrong again, Tim. Ah, it just wants, you know, just want, if you want to be me, gonna, just be honest about it. It's just going to make me do it all over again. Unbelievable. All Ooh, and do it, every time I told you it's a problem. <laughs> You're so right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, how do you play bingo? Well, you got four corners. And what you do is, like we told you before, is you download a bingo card from our website. It's totally free. And Tim just walked over all of the good stuff that you can get from our friends at Morning View Mercantile, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Craft Beer Nation. And when you get through bingo, what do you do? Well, if you win bingo... Then you got to go to the doors of... Did you finish another beer? No, I just sampled them. Oh, I can't right, sample right. the whole can. The doors of doom is what you get next, and you will see what that is here yeah. shortly. I don't... I don't think... I haven't heard from the wizard. Is he not here today? I haven't seen him. Well, I called him. Well, <laughs> I sent him an email. I sent him an email. I think, I think this year what I heard is that... Uh, well, he's away. The doors might be a little more generous than normal. Oh. But you never know. So get out your bingo cards, and the first four calls are right there on the screen. We got them. So it is so. a four corners, guys. So we need to see on your card. So when you, uh, if you're going to bingo out on us, you need all four corners. Then you need to tell us your card ID, and we need to know which call it happened on. So for instance, if you by some miracle got four, in the first four, you and it was call four, you would say Kaga's, Hula Charlie, or say call four. And then we would know which call it's on and the card ID. Yeah, and that helps us. And there is ties and there's tiebreakers. Yes. So having said that, you might tie. All right, next call is the Chimera. Chimera. I'm going on a beer run. I'm down. Why don't we try one of those chocolate? I was thinking the same thing. I like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Chimera. Okay, so folks, you don't got it. So we got next call is the last chance purple haze. Do you have the last chance purple haze? All right. The next beer that we're trying here is an organic chocolate stout from this Samuel one. Smith's Family owned and operated brewery since 1758. So they're not even oh. trendy. They're just like they're doing just here it forever. And Crap Beer Nation sent us this. And said, hey, this was highly recommended. Highly sold out of the back. Sold out of the back. Of the store. Only. You have to ask for this. Yeah. It's not on the shelves. You better hope he has it. Okay, we got halfway there, but I'm always halfway. <laughs> well, well, Mr. Rick Flink did not show up because we show wish up. him happy birthday. Of course he's not here. He lost yesterday. Last what, is, week. What, is, what does stout mean? 
just means it's uh, like, stout. Is it like a lager. Dave, dark? give us some input on what dark. stout means. Oh, it is dark. That's like That's a dark. Guinness. Look at the head on that thing. That's what she said. To the beer. All right. Anybody win, Cole? Nobody. Stouts. Anybody yet? An O for four and a two for four. Oh, it's dark, dark, dark. That is a dark beer. I'm excited well, for this. Yeah, you know what they say. You know what they say. <laughs> Last what chance, <laughs> purple haze, and the <laughs> damselfly nymph. I'm actually excited GWSS. For that, one. that one. This looks like chocolate milk. Yeah, I think it is. No, that doesn't look like chocolate milk. What chocolate milk have you been drinking? The one that's pure Nesquik. You been getting your milk from your bowl again? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm talking about the bottom. Oh, yeah. Rick's here. Rick's here. He oh. ain't leaving. He ain't leaving. Okay, good, oh, good, good, good. Rick, okay. good. All oh, right. Dave, as Dave, always, shows up for bingo. Card, we'll this leave card in five blows. minutes. <laughs> Undo zipper. Stick it in. <laughs> All right. Let's get a little estimation on this here. Oh, good nose. Lord, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? That's, that's good. <laughs> it's not thick. Mr. Fitzsimmons, you could finish off my can. Oh, my goodness. That is so good. It does. Dave described this as they squished some Nesquik into the into the can. And yeah, that is, it's what it yep. is. Absolutely, it's, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that it, is too good. So uh, you're going to need to save a flat of that, Dave. Craft um, Beer Nation. Head up there. Wow, that is that's number a new okay, number it's one. Jesse's it's like three chocolate for all the way through. All the way through. Yeah, that is too good. Okay, we gotta check in with the folks up here. Man, that's the one. That might even deserve a cheers from the couch. He scored it. <laughs> Wow. All right, all, right. all right. Looks like right. nobody's on call number seven. Half and half deceiver. I understand. Ooh. Some of them have disappeared. But mm. if you're just joining us and you need call number one, it is the Kung Fu Crab. It's coming up here in a couple weeks. Uh, someone was asking yeah. about ASMR earlier, and if you go back to season four, we have a really yeah. we'll do it again. We'll do it again. That was that, that was, was a hilarious episode. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Everybody was thought that the camera was broken. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even really know what it meant at yeah. that time, so me neither. No. Or what about the, the dance party when the music or when there's oh that was season four episode one the first one, one yeah. yeah yeah we got the smoke machine we got got some lights we'll get her going gotta get the band back together the, the band gotta the get band. Mr. Novlin down here he's coming when you're going the hairy nipple gotta All get right. it next call is the smooth paths Ooh. trending trending now <laughs> trending now. Made it trend. The smooth <laughs> paths. Why do we pause when we call one? Because we just wait for the comments to roll in. Oh, Troy's got two in a row. But he needs corners. He needs corners. <laughs> Dang it. Maybe he means he got two corners. In it. Man, this is taking longer than normal. All right, what we'll make, next? We'll make another nobody, call. Yeah. What comes next? Purple Haze Soft Hackle. All oh, the Purple Haze is the last chance for Blaze. Yeah. <laughs> the Purple Haze Soft Hackle. Some the Purple Haze Soft Hackle is a nymph. And the last chance Purple Haze is a... Is that a merger? Nope. It's the other end of the spectrum, the far end. The dry? Yeah, but after it's dry, it's dry. Oh, the spinner? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad I didn't have to take the quiz. All right, Roger Beatty. Oh, we got a bingo. Oh, we got a bingo. Roger got bingo. Roger got... I love that everybody is, <laughs> is hammering this. Okay. <laughs> Roger's... Oh, Roger. Roger, you've been here long enough. You know the rules. Bingo. 
068 is your card and what call you got it on. Look at that. And Paul would just like you to call some that are in the corners. Uh, it would go faster. Yeah, well, Paul, we're going to try. Is that it? No ties today? Just Roger? Right, we're going to try 068. We're going to wait and see if... We're going to see if Roger's a winner. Oh, Roger. Let's see. Uh, looks oh, like a winner that's card. a winner right there. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Raj is a winner. <laughs> oh, nicely done. Mr. Roger Beatty, you are the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Are you right. ready? Are you ready to face your wildest dreams? <sighs> so, folks, what breath. happens now? You've just tuned in. This is your first time watching. Well, Roger's about to win a lot of prizes, and Roger's about to lose everything. Uh, Maybe not Roger Maybe not. You just hold tight We're going to say thanks to our sponsors We're going to come back and jump right into the doors of doom In the heart of nature When hunger strikes And time is of the essence Morning View Mercantile has the solution Witness how we redefine convenience It's not just a meal It's an experience In mere moments A feast emerges Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition. Mr. Roger Beatty, are you ready for the doors of doom? <laughs> the doors. <laughs> Take the back door. <laughs> Your microphone's hot, Tim. Oh, <laughs> man, it's really got... Why do I get this voice? Uh, you always do. It's so awful. It just, 
be I can wait. Oh, oh man. Oh yeah, there it is, folks. <sighs> I don't even know. <laughs> There's a lot of doors. It'll be the trap door. <laughs> Just remember, folks, the wizard's gone right now. And what that means is his brother, the wizard. The wizard has been <laughs> a little kind. See what you did there. All right, Roger. <laughs> 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 Roger's ready. All right, Roger. Wait, have you seen that meme where it's like a bunch of dudes in a choir going... <laughs> and it says, me and the boys heading to your mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Roger, man. it's really dark. All right, Roger. You've only got nine doors. That's not really a lot, but it is a lot. It is a lot. But there might be some good stuff in there. Not just what you're thinking. I'm going to sit here and wait. Uh, Roger, give us a number. One to nine. One to nine. So what happens right now, folks, is that once you've won the bingo, you've got a chance to face the wizard. And that means nine opportunities. All right, Roger is going to be oh, door number seven. Let's see what's in there. Tim, I don't even remember which door the wizard told me to make the way. But as Roger has done so often before, I don't know. I don't even know what's behind this one. I'm actually going to peek. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, Roger, I would like to say that by the grace of the wizard, and the wizard's friend, Ken McCutcheon, you have won a seventy-five-dollar Rocky Mountain Fly Shop gift card. What? For free? <laughs> For free! <laughs> For That's crazy! Absolutely free! He didn't wow. have to do anything. He just shows up every week, watches the show, downloads a bingo card. And wins. Very nice. This there must one, be some good options this in there. This one, Roger, you can thank Ken McCutcheon, Fly Trout. Because Fly Trout made sure there was extra prizes in the doors. I like it. So another week. Another, another week for week, the prizes. We will hold on and the prize hamper will build. It will grow. Like I said, folks, there's a lot more prizes under the door than just what you see over here. And sometimes there might be bigger prizes behind the doors than what you see here. Yeah, that ain't such a bad thing. You never know. Bones. That's what's the fun part about tuning in to TNL. Oh, yeah. Uh, Roger, send me an email, however you want to communicate, and I will send you the $75. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop gift card sponsored by Ken McCutcheon. You might have seen on such shows as <laughs> the, the Couch Guys. Whatever, couch Guys. Whatever they are. So, anyways. Wow. That's great. 75 bucks. Nice job. And thanks, Ken, for donating that to the show and giving back to the community. And uh, Roger was blessed to, to get that. So, yeah. You see, there's more in there than maybe just the prizes. It's, oh, it's that's what's guessing. fun about this year, Tim. You never know what you're going to find. Well, I suppose it's time we should get on to our second fly of the night, which is going to be our slum hopper. So, go ahead into your kit and grab out the, the foam fly. I'm going to grab one here. I'll tell you what. This chocolate beer is just chocolate. It is pretty delicious. It is something spectacular. So you're going to find something that looks a little like this. You're going to tell pretty easily because it's got a bunch of foam in it. That's going to be the pattern we're after. Really struggling with the tunes tonight, Tim. I'll just say yeah, I failed. Just, you got to go to K-pop. It's, the, it's where it's at. It's always a K-pop. Okay. So 
the cool thing about this fly, guys, is uh, we've done the hard work for you. So we've already pre-cut all of your pieces of foam um, into the hopper shape, which makes your life quite a bit easier. Um, and it's really simple. There's like three or four materials that you just we're going to be able to throw together. But I'm going to get to show you a couple techniques that we're actually going to use later um, in the season on different flies. Uh, working with foam which is uh everybody kind of likes I, I mean I, I enjoy it too but we definitely there's something about hoppers that are super fun to tie um, and this one doesn't disappoint because when you're done it gives you a really good profiled hopper it's not super big Tim dump your stuff in your rolling tray well it's full of my other stuff so <laughs> that's a good point I need two trays Eric said that come on Eric it's calling me out okay so the first thing we're gonna get to is obviously get your materials out um, we're gonna get our hook in the vise. So this is a size 10 streamer hook. So not not an overly giant uh, giant hook by any means. I'm just gonna get this in here and then I'm gonna ditch this mic and get over to my other one. Oh no, that just breaks my heart. I yeah, know, it's true. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm gonna get over there to this. We gotta serve that up the here pretty quick. The baking cam and we're, me, me and Cole are gonna get it ready. So when you're done this fly, which doesn't take long, Look at that bear hook. Bear hook it is. Okay, so I'm very anal about that being straight. Still not. Try again. That's close enough. Okay, guys. So something you're gonna want here um, to make your life a lot easier, you're gonna want some type of either razor blade or like an X-Acto knife or a scalpel, something super sharp, because we're gonna be making a cut in the foam before we even really get started. Um, and that's gonna really aid in helping this fly secure itself to the hook. So you can see those pieces of foam we have kind of cut out for you in the shape of a hopper. It doesn't matter which side you use, just pick a top or a bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I'm gonna use this, uh, this little razor blade. So this is one that I would like trim deer hair with. It's just very sharp, so it cuts very well. Um, and then I'm gonna approach this foam and I'm gonna make a cut from basically, flip it the other way. I'm gonna cut from basically two thirds of the way um, up the foam on the tail side. And I'm gonna cut a nice little groove all the way to the tip of the head. Try to hold this a little better so you can see it. So if I'm, if I'm here, I'm gonna cut from, let's say about there, all the way down to the tip here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. You want a nice even cut. You want it to be the same depth. Uh, make sure I get this right. Hard to see upside down. I wanna start my cut right about there. I'm gonna go in, try to keep it nice and straight and all the way out the front of the fly. Okay, so just like that. And when I'm done, should be able to kind of spread that foam out and see that there's that cut right there. You just want it to be fairly even all the way through. And then we can go ahead and we can set that aside. Okay, we're gonna get back to that piece of foam in a second. Now for this fly, I'm gonna be tying with a UTC 140 again, a little bit heavier thread. This helps with not cutting um, through the foam. Um, and it also helps to kind of lay a nice base down on the hook so that the foam doesn't wanna slip around the hook too much. And I'm gonna be using a tan color because it pretty closely matches the fly. Um, but don't be afraid to use black or olive or yellow or whatever, because this is just going to add accent to the segmentations that we build in the um, in the hopper itself. So I'm going to go ahead and start my thread just behind the eye, and I'm going to work it down just over halfway. Don't want to go much further than half, so somewhere right about there. And I'm going to work it all the way back up, nice touching wraps, all the way to the eye. The reason I'm laying a little bit extra thread down here is this is gonna help that um, that fly actually stick a little better because the, the issue with the foam is it wants to roll on the hook. So if you've got some super glue handy right now, I would just go put a dab of super glue on there. That's gonna make this even better for you. I don't have some on the desk right now, so I'll use some Sally Hansen's here in a moment before I put it down. Um, <clears throat> but that's really gonna help that fly stick and not wanna move on the hook shank itself. So once I'm up front here, I'm gonna go back one more time. Nice touching wraps. All the way back to that just over half point. And I'm just gonna let my thread hang. Um, see what I did with my resin. Set it here somewhere. There it is. 
So I'm just gonna put some Sally Hansen's on. This won't cure right away, but it'll kind of cure over the time that I'm using the fly, that I'm building it. I'm just gonna put a little dab on there. This is kind of a little bit old, I think. And I'm just gonna kind of touch it around. Don't want it to be a big glob anywhere. Just enough Jim's to... James William Crawford has graced us with his presence. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. And then I'm gonna go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm gonna grab that foam on the side that's got obviously the, the cut in it. I'm gonna put that, arrange it so that the, the thin portion, which is gonna be our tail, is pointed back down the hook. And I'm gonna place that right on top of the hook where I made that cut. And I want the hook eye to be just out in front of the foam. And then I'm just gonna push it on so it sits in that groove that I've created. So it should, it should sit like that. You can see your eye is kind of sitting down in front of it. And now I know the foam right now looks very bulky and it looks like it's not gonna look like much, but once we put some thread wraps on it, it's gonna tighten it right down and you're gonna see that it kind of turns into something really nice. So once I have it down and it's kind of sitting on there, if you got super glue, it's probably already cured. For me, it's gonna take a bit, but I'm gonna still go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna take a thread wrap right up over the foam, right where I left it. And I'm gonna hold the foam so it can't move around the hook and I'm gonna just squeeze down and I'm gonna do about three or four more wraps. Each wrap I pull a little harder, just really sucking that down onto the fly so it's gonna look something like that. And then when you see the underside, you can see it started to form. It's kind of enveloping that hook and it's making it uh, kind of start to gain its appearance. Now, one of the cool things about foam is if I can hide my work and what I mean by that is, is we don't really wanna show extra cross thread wraps or anything on the bottom end of the fly because that's gonna mean that, you know, the fish could see it. If I've got extra thread over here, I wanna keep all my work up on top. So I now wanna take, if I um, work to kind of measure, you know, from where my hook, from my wrap is to the hook eye, I wanna kind of cut that right in half and that's where I'm gonna make my next wrap. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna come at an angle. I'm gonna angle like this on top of the fly and then come around the side and that's gonna hide my work up on top. And so then I'm gonna kind of get that one full wrap so it's gonna look like that. I'll put it back like this so I can see it. And then I'm gonna cinch it down. Take a couple wraps there, cinch it down. So what I'm left with is something that looks like this. I've crossed over the top. You can see on the bottom, it still looks the same. Haven't done anything there. And now um, I'm able to move from each segment back and forth by using that cross wrap um, and never actually you know, show anything on the bottom. So now when I go back to the other side, I'm just gonna cross over again. Now it's gonna look like an X and I'm gonna slide it into that slot. I'll tip it back up and pull it tight. Do, a, do one more wrap, kind of straighten it out so it looks like so. And that's what I'm left with. Looks really good on the bottom, no issues there. And now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and grab our first set of rubber legs. So I'm just gonna grab a chunk here and I'm gonna cut it in half. This will be enough for one fly. There's probably enough for two flies actually in here, but I'm gonna leave them a little long just cause it makes it a little easier for showing you how to tie it in. I'm gonna split them in half and I'm just gonna cut. So I got two equal portions like so. Now I'm gonna take this first one and I'm gonna set it so that it sits about the same length as the back of the fly. I'll just kind of set it out there. I'll move this hand so you can see it. And I wanna tie it in right on the side of the fly. So I'm gonna come in like this kind of grip one light wrap, a second light wrap, and then I can go in here and I can arrange it the way I want it to be. So if I need to move it back and forth or I need to bring it up because we want it to sit about in the middle of that foam. So I just kind of maneuver it. And now that I've got it kind of stuck, I'll do one more good securing wrap. Now I'll grab that other piece and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'll let it hang out to the back of the fly, pinch it down, one loose wrap, second one's a little bit tighter. I'm gonna rearrange this so it's sitting where I want it to be. Just a quick question, yeah. or a couple questions. Sure. Uh, Joey said, where can I buy all the thread? RockyMountFlyShop.net. All orders over $49 ship for free. Yeah. RockyMountFlyShop.net. All orders over $49 ship for free. Chaz wrote it in there, and the Moorish Hopper is similar. Very similar. Yeah. A little more complicated. A little bit more, but yep. Yeah. Great question though. <clears throat> okay, so this is where we're sitting. Now all we're gonna do is do that cross wrap one more time so we can work back up to the front segment of the fly. Do a wrap, 
And now I'm gonna pull that leg back against the body in the front. And I will do another thread wrap to secure it there. Same as I did before, I'll do one and two. And now I've got it secured in the front. Then I'll grab the one on the near side of the fly over here. I'll do the exact same thing. So we basically just secured these legs in two places. And once I got that down, got a good tight wrap, make sure it doesn't move. I should be left with something that looks like this. <laughs> For some reason, my back rubber leg has no bars on it, but ignore that. So that's what I should be left with. <clears throat> now from here, it's actually really simple. We're just gonna add a, a couple more cider pieces. So like a cider foam and a cider um, parapost, and that's gonna be about it. So once I come in here now, <clears throat> First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, this could be Z-Lon, you could use Z-Lon, Antron, you could use uh, Parapost, whatever. You've got a big long strand of it in your kit. I want you to grab a piece that's just over an inch long, something like that, nothing too crazy, and just cut it off. Cut yourself a little piece of it. If it's too long, it's totally fine because we can trim it. It's gonna look something like this, okay? Now I'm gonna just put a little bit of moisture on it so I can slick it together so it ties in a little nicer. I'm gonna get kind of up close to the tip and I'm gonna tie this in with that back or the head segment. So all I'm gonna do is do a thread wrap. I can leave a little extra material hanging out in front and then once I get it on there, I can just pull it back so you can see it kind of suck back. Then do a couple of wraps to make sure that's not going anywhere. Pull it down tight. And I'm just gonna leave that hanging out like that. We'll trim that in a minute. So that's gonna be our first cider piece. Now this next piece, I'm gonna use some white foam. You could use orange, pink, whatever you want that you find visible for your eye. I like white, white kind of shows up against the contrast of our, our waters quite well. So I'm gonna go with the white foam here. I'm gonna actually just cut a little bit of a point into this one like this. And once it looks like a sharp point, I'm just gonna take a little nip off it to blunt it off like that. So that's kind of what I'm left with. And now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna lay this right on top with that cut edge towards the front of the eye. And I'm gonna lay it so it's even with the head of the hopper, okay? And now I'm just gonna take a kind of a loose wrap at first to kind of gather it. And then the next wrap's gonna be a little tighter. I'm gonna pinch the foam so it doesn't move. Hold it down, one more wrap. And now what that foam has done, done is it's actually held and kind of controlled where my wing is. My wing's gonna sit back like this. And that foam's gonna kind of control it. Then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna leave about twice the length that I did at the head here, somewhere roughly. I'm gonna leave it up like this. I'm gonna trim it at an angle. So now it's just got one sharp angle. So if I show it to you like that, it looks like that. But then when I come and cut an angle on the other side, it's gonna make a point. So I'm left with it looking like that, okay? That's gonna sit just like that. And then really all I gotta do is come back. I'm gonna pull this yarn back at the back and I'm gonna cut it off even with the back of the hopper. I can just toss that. And guys, we're pretty much there. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish, trim my legs, and my hopper is virtually complete. So I'll come and grab a whip finish tool. Gonna come over here, gonna do a three or four turn whip finish. Make sure my legs don't get stuck in there. Slide it down, grab the foam, cinch that knot so I know it's not gonna move. I'll do one more. I'm not gonna use any resin on this one. You can if you want, but a double whip finish kinda solves that problem. Knot it down nice and tight, and then I'll trim that out. Set it aside, and now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim my front legs so they're either the same length as the back legs or just a touch shorter. So I like to grab both legs together, pinch them out in front of the fly, Kind of gauge my, cut them a little long at first if you need to. And then you can always come back and trim them a little shorter. So when I look at this, they look a little bit longer than the back legs. So I'm gonna just trim them up a bit. So they're pretty even. Take just a smidge more. Just remember you can't put it back on once you trim it off, so don't over trim it. And there we go. That is our slum hopper, very, very simple. If you'd like, you can go touch a little bit of resin on just the two places that have wraps on them. Um, if, you, if you fear that that's gonna come out or your knot didn't go super well. And uh, yeah, other than that, that's, that's about our slum hopper. It's not a super complicated pattern. 
Um, but it's nice and small. I don't know about your home waters, but for us, we do fish quite a bit of smaller hoppers. We're not always fishing these, these big gaudy things. Um, and that's a, that's a great size and great color for what we fish. So definitely uh, fill up your box with those ones, tie all the ones you can out of your kit, and uh, yeah, give them a try, see what you think. That is the slum hopper. Slum hopper. Slum hopper. <coughs> all right, well, there we go. You can switch mics. Back to the good mic. Back to the goodness, because that other one is really interesting. I'm going to work on that. Yeah, it's an interesting on. sound for sure. It's a lot. It's uh, spacious. And no, Cam, that, that foam shouldn't get eaten by a fly agar. I haven't found a foam that does. Maybe you have, but... No. I haven't. Uh, fly agra, a floating that keeps your bugs up for a long time. But if they stay up too long... Please consult your local fly shop. Yeah, more than four hours, they <laughs> say. Four hours. Uh, so the thing with this one is it floats. It's a big chunk of foam, and it's not complicated. But sometimes people fish hoppers that they drowned. So uh, smaller profiles as well as less foam, and then maybe that's your friend. Or you can just tie some split shot. Have you ever tied... A hopper to fish a drone under the water a drowned hopper i haven't but i've heard rumors i took a guy this year and that's all he fishes in the mountains it's very interesting like under an indicator as a dropper or what does he do yeah both crazy all right well, i don't think it's a dropper <laughs> <laughs> but split shot on it dropper it's interesting though because a lot of terrestrials they do drown they do that's true i'm just gonna move this I'm going to go over here. I'm going to ask you a question. All right. Why do trout key in on grasshoppers as a food source during certain times of the year? Because they're in the water certain times of the year. And what would those times be? Somewhere in and around August. In the summer. In the summer. Do grasshoppers have wings? Some do. Not all of them. Yes, that's true. Uh, what time of the year is the best for fishing the slum hopper? Mm, I'm going to go with winter, uh, winter, <laughs> summer, August. All right. Another thing is what is the primary purpose of a grasshopper's hind legs to jump? Okay. So <clears> having <throat> said that, what happens when they fall in the water? Yeah, they move. They don't, they just don't go anywhere. Their only way to get around is to uh, flex, push off. Flex and push. Flex and push. It's like oh. me at the gym doing tricep curls. <laughs> Tries and buys. <laughs> uh, having said that, <clears throat> they don't they don't do well if uh, if they're in the water. No, so they're Tim, pretty vulnerable. Tim had a great thing we talked about today. Tim, why yeah. don't you tell everybody about what you heard about hoppers and yeah. rat piss and cat piss? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting conversation, but um, yeah, so apparently with hoppers, because um, I kind of deep dove into this one, I'm not going to say all hoppers that are in the water happen this way, because we know they do get blown off the grass. A lot of times we see success on a windy, a windy sunny day, whatever. Um, but some hoppers actually get a parasite. Now, this parasite, for whatever reason, makes them want to jump into the water. The parasite has kind of coated their brain to be like, I need to jump into the water. And reason being is that parasite actually can only hatch from a larvae state, which it is in, in the hopper, um, to an adult if it's in water. So it'll, it basically then would get the water or the parasite in the water gets ingested by mammals and it, you know, goes through their system and the cycle continues because it gets back in the grass and so on and so forth, makes its way into hoppers. But it needs a way to get into the water and they use the hoppers as a way to do it so they call them the suicidal hopper wow. because they get this parasite and the parasite they makes them want to jump in they jump in they got a poo which it's is like they got a poo in the water right crazy there. it's right there so interesting facts about grasshoppers and that was uh source was the sun tau podcast on meat eaters yeah that's where i heard it the first time and then we had to go researching and it was true it's true yeah. but uh, will that make you a better fisherman? <laughs> Probably not. No, kind of cool um, to know. Will fish eat grasshoppers in the middle of the river? A hundred percent. 
Why wouldn't they? I guess what I'll say about grasshoppers is don't overthink it. Yeah, it's close to the bank. But if there's no water there, holding water, sometimes and a lot of times they eat them right in the middle of the river. Right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle. Well, they're not always going to just fall off the grass and stay in the middle or stay near the grass. They're going to get pushed around. Yeah. Different Nick places. Best. Nick Best is back. He's been in and out, out in and out. I think he was running stairs today for the firefighters <laughs> challenge, or maybe that was yesterday. Oh, nice. Well, anyways, that's how it goes. Make sure you guys head over to the website, take the quiz, collect, collect the images. Collect them. That is so crucial for tonight's crowd. Mm. Because once this one's gone, it's gone. And you got to do all and of them. You got to do all of them. You need all 12. You need all 12. Yep. All right. Well, Color folks, one more time, we want to thank our sponsors. And then we're going to head into our favorite part of the night. And that's the part you don't want to miss because Mr. Cole himself is here live with us. And that's the wins where you share what's important now. And uh, trust me, a lot of people stick around. We're only eight minutes over, so Dave's not going to be going too fruity no. about uh, doing his beer reviews after the show because, <laughs> you know, he waits so long. Yeah. In the heart of nature, when hunger strikes and time is of the essence, Morning View Mercantile has the solution. Witness how we redefine convenience. It's not just a meal. It's an experience. In mere moments... A feast emerges. Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition. folks there it is the great people that help make the show happen uh yeah some people come for the time some people come for the game some people come for um the bs and, <clears throat> and some people most people come for the wins and that's what we're doing right now we're hanging out with you guys as the show finishes and we're sharing our wins the important part of the night uh what's important now so just wanted to answer a couple of the questions in there is paul d said refresh me with a website for the quiz if you go to flyfishingborber.com backslash tnls6 maybe what I'll, i gotta i don't know maybe jump in the gun uh but just scroll down and it'll say take the quiz so you take the quiz and it'll be stuff from tonight so each week you can 
or take the quiz. And if you get over 80%, uh, it'll be a picture. You can download that picture. And then when you get all 12 of those pictures, they're going to go together and they're going to make a picture. And it's a coloring picture, 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 all the pictures. And you're going to color that picture. You'll see. Go to the website. Check it out. If you have questions, let us know. It's going to be up there for a bit, but it's not going to be up there for ever. Not forever. Not forever. And what we're doing here while we share our wins is we're checking out Freezing Brothers Pie. I chose to go with the strawberry rhubarb. I I'll tell apple. you. I'll tell you how it goes. This looks very good. Can't get around my mic. Oh, or goodness. the curtains. Well, I can get around the curtains, Tim. <laughs> Stop mm. for later. That's some oh good <laughs> Honestly. Cool. Pretty gang. How's your warm apple pie? I'm trying to figure out why there was that hole in it. Oh. <laughs> it's like there's a movie about that. Well, <laughs> it was a roll of dimes. <laughs> Just a roll of dimes. Can forgot his roll of dimes. Mm. Yeah, can can's a roll of dimes. Cam's a roll of. Uh... Anyways, we're gonna share wins. I'm gonna share one later. <laughs> Tim's gonna share one. Nicole's gonna share one. I'm gonna share one. And then you guys are gonna share your wins. And we're gonna put them up on the screen. That's how we end the show every Thursday. Every Thursday. That is so good. Yeah, that's really good. Had apple pie in a long time. Oh man, strawberry rhubarb, like that pie crust. Mm. Good. Crust makes a pie. Absolutely. Mm. It's like, like the back of my tongue is dancing with that chocolate beer. I, <laughs> I know chocolate beer. Oh man. You had you already finished that thing? Well, you've been tying flies, yeah, and I've just been, been here annoying people. <laughs> Okay, so one thing we want to talk about real quick here, guys, before we uh, go into our wins. So, um, Dave from um, Craft Beer Nation, he would like to have um, people come into the shop on Thursdays. He's willing to open up the space, um, come have some beers. Um, he would love if Claude and Colleen will come over as well and maybe bring some snacks for people to, to get if they want, that kind of thing. Um, but the whole idea is that it's just another space that you can come. They'll put up the show on the, on the big screen and you'll be able to watch along. Um, but you want to make it worthwhile. So there, it's, it is in Red Deer on Gaston Alley. So there needs to be, uh, you know, probably, I mean, he said today, if there's even one person there, it's worth it, which is awesome. Um, but that being said, it'd be great if there's people who want to show up. So he will actually kind of do it as like a little bit of an, <clears throat> um, if you're interested, you're going to send an email to him and he can do a little bit of an invite process because it, it helps with the liquor licensing so that you're able to drink when you're actually yeah. in there. Um, so he doesn't get any trouble or anything like that. He has liquor license, but it just has to be by invite. So, um, Dave, I, if you're still in here, drop an email that people can reach you at. And if you have interest, you're from the Red Deer area. I know we got some people in Black Falls, we got some people in Sylvan, um, and some people in Red Deer. So it'd be great for you guys to all be able to connect on Thursdays and have a space where you can kind of come and hang out. Um, this is about community. So although we don't really get to be with you guys, you know, in the breweries anymore, doesn't mean that you guys can't be together. Um, so if you're if you're interested in that, um, we'll make sure we'll if we see them, drop it in here. Um, if not this week, next week, we'll definitely have an email for you to reach out to. Um, so that you could, there it is right there, Craft Beer Nation. Uh, there's the email. So if you're interested in having a local meetup in Red Deer on Thursday evenings at seven, um, he's willing to keep the shop open. Um, and Dean, for Dean's coming another in. one there. Yeah, I, Dean, I he's, say, yeah. he's he's up in, uh, yeah, he's in Black Falls. So yeah, he stopped in at Craft Nation. Oh, he did too, yeah. today. Oh, awesome. It I'm feels good to support the people that support. Yeah, people. it does. It's, it's perfect full circle. So yeah. So, I mean, Dave's jumped in and been super supportive. Uh, he's got the space, he's got the beer, and if you're in that area uh, and you want to stop in, uh, reach out to him because uh, that's truly what it's about is the TNL fam. Yeah. And uh, yeah, might get two people there. My camera's focusing on <laughs> something. Yeah, I like that thing behind me. <laughs> Um, yeah, just let them know because uh, a couple of people want to hang out. You don't have to guarantee you're going every week, 
uh, but just enough to make it worth his while to stay there, uh, extend the liquor license, and drink that chocolate beer. Oh. And that pie. That pie. It's a good mix. That crust. Mm-hmm. I feel satiated. I feel satiated. All right. I think we've gone over the checklist. Yeah. Checking at toys. Next week, we're tying up uh, a couple more flies. Yeah, what do we got next week? We got the wine, the wine booby, booby and the Peterborough. Peterborough guys. Yeah. Peterborough. Some more foam. Some more, you know, it's like kind of the same thing as this week. Like a streamer and yeah. foam. Pretty Very good. applicable flies, yeah. Pretty good. And if uh, you didn't tie tonight, tomorrow we'll be dropping the quick ties. So these flies tied uh, without without the show. Without the show, just a quick, quick tie. So quick tie. <laughs> Don't know how to All say right. it. It's a quick tie. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna go. See, we're still wrong. We're still Why? wrong on the screens. Ah, it's fine. I'm gonna have to go and change them all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Double up. See, I look so much better in this camera than this one. It looks so pale. Yeah, well, it's it you. It's all <laughs> you. It's all me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I look like I ran a marathon in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. They're running to get the pie. Uh, which one is this going to be? Is this going to be me? Is this going to be me? There, there it is. is. Just like old times uh, <laughs> when we used to sit above our names. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to go like this. We're going to go Tim. We're going to go Guy on the Couch. <laughs> and we're going to go Dana. And then we're going to put your wins up on the screen because that's what's most important. It's just sharing. What's important now? What's important now? Well, um, so I guess my win for the week, uh, I'm sure she's not in here because she's probably busy training or getting the kid to bed, but um, my win is my wife. Um, I've been super busy lately. I'm taking some courses and I'm, you know, I'm definitely leaving some slack around the house and other places, but, uh, you know, having a partner who understands your goals whether it's in fly fishing or other things in life. Um, I just feel super blessed this week to just see her um, work hard to, you know, pick up my slack when I'm not able to do everything that I should be doing um, because I'm busy with other things. And uh, yeah, for me, family is everything, whether it's my chosen family or whether it's my family family. Um, But yeah, my win this week is going to be my wife because she's she's everything to me. And um, I'm just so grateful for her and for all that she does to, to support me through many many ups and downs and stressful times and uh looking towards the future she's always kind of my you know my rock and my encouragement so my wife trish this week she's gonna be my win all right guy on the couch yeah kind of along the same lines my win is my wife and out there building my new best friend and just doing a heck of a job it's a tough road but you just keep going and build that little ear, build those toes, and <laughs> can't wait for March. Yep. That's what. And yeah, kind of a second wind is being up here with the guys on the TNL fam, favorite time of year. It's absolutely a, a huge, it's a huge part of my life anyways. It's It's gotten me through some tough times. So I definitely appreciate everybody here. The Tim, Dana, they're a couple of beauties and all the, I love seeing all the comments up on the board, especially guys like Chaz and Craig, and I could list can go on and on. And yeah, I just really appreciate the TNL fam. Why don't you tell us what you do? Because it's kind of very uh, important, and I don't know if everybody knows exactly what you do. We talk about it, but I don't know if they've actually put like a face to the name. So yeah, so I'm. Uh, in resource law enforcement so i'm the local game warden down in the cochran area cochran <laughs> camera from like edmonton to montana <laughs> yeah we yeah. kind of go all over the map so yeah we're stretched pretty thin uh and sometimes there's hard days and sometimes there's great days like i always say that whenever i'm having a tough time lots of paperwork or somebody giving me some attitude it's well i'm gonna go for a drive and go look at some big shiny rocks and Go we'll talk to some good fly fishermen and some, yeah, just good people. The The question I, I get a lot is being in law enforcement, comparing us to something like a, an RCMP or a, a city cop is being a game warden is 
boat, 95% of the people I talk to are good people. And then they're just out there enjoying the resources. And we're out there trying to encourage people to take care of the resources. And I want my future grandchildren to have these fish in the river. So that's why I do what I do. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of days where it's tough and a lot of people don't agree. There's a lot of rules that a lot of things that I don't agree with, but it's it's there for a reason. So yeah, if you're if they're out there and you're seeing something, don't hesitate to call. I, that's my big goal with this community and joining guide school or helping out with guide school and that kind of stuff is bridging that gap because it could be pretty intimidating calling the reporter poacher program wherever you are and yeah talking to that game warden because not all of us are a bunch of robots we're humans too and we enjoy fishing just as much as the next guy hunting fishing hiking so we want to be able to see that stuff uh keep going for the future so yeah feel free to give us a shout and more than happy to chat and more we drink a lot of coffee so (laughs) that's what we like to do so yeah if you Go meet up at the local Starbucks, go have a chinwag, and I'm sure that they'll, we're out on the river quite a bit, so we can maybe potentially share a couple hot spots. (laughs) (laughs) The spots that the people poach big fish from. (laughs) Yeah. We call them previous hot spots. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so we just, you know, like we've said before, but like I also said, people aren't, you know, probably don't put a face to the name, and... I think to humanize what you guys do uh, puts a lot of perspective on it. And uh, we know we get a, we get to see Cole out there. We get to call him. Uh, The biggest thing is to know that he's on the same team as us is that, you know, we're all conservationists and we're all just wanting a better place for, for us, for our kids, for our grandkids. Um, And, you know, we work closely with Cole and, and some of the other officers to, uh, to try to keep that place uh, a better place. So we thank you for what you do in putting yourself in harm's way. You're going out there uh, dealing with people who are uh, carrying guns because that's hunters. And uh, a lot of times the other people that you see aren't happy to see you because obviously they're trying to hide. And uh, yeah, we're just grateful to have you as a friend have you a part of the TNL fam and uh, it's always fun when you come out here, mm-hmm. hang out on the couch, eat some apple pie. And- yeah, it's always a good time. And I think Eric said it, uh, it's like welcome to Canada by a game word and he couldn't absolutely believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome that day. Eric yeah. came up here. So. All right. Yeah, thanks, my win your and turn. then your guys' win. Uh, it's kind of annoying me the some reason my camera wants to focus on that cup up there. <laughs> more it's important, picking its place. <laughs> more important. Uh, so you guys have left me in a uh, tight spot here because if I don't say Janine, <laughs> then, <laughs> then I'm going to be sleeping on the couch. Good luck with that. Uh, but what I do want to say, and I, I really, I do mean it, is I'm going to throw that thing out. Stop. Um, my win for the week is our sponsors. Uh, it's a relationship that we've built with many of them. And, uh, I just spent Monday night with Claude and Colleen up in Red Deer, having a drink, uh, over at Red Stag Brewery. I uh, saw an old friend that runs a brewery there and, uh, they were just like raving about the TNL fam. And I just... It just reminded me, and then I saw Dean's comments in here earlier and how he went down to Craft Beer Nation and he went over to Friesen Brothers and it just, it's just really cool to see uh, the, the group of people that, that put their money and sponsorship and their time and their gifts uh, into us so that we can be here and do this and hang out and be stupid and eat pie and drink beer and tie some flies and hang out with you guys. It's just cool. So I just I just really want to throw it out to the sponsors this week and just say, like, that's that's the win. The win, because, I mean, it kind of is a far-fetched thing to believe in this idea of an untraditional fly tying show that is probably uh, a quarter fly tying and then three quarters... <laughs> 
a yes. lot of other things <laughs> that and uh like that the sponsors the people that tune in and like i thought rick wasn't here and then he chimes <laughs> yeah. in and it's just like of course of course, of course he's, he's here. here yeah so to the sponsors uh to you people who keep showing up every single week and uh I'm just having a lot of fun this year, and that's kind of a renewed, renewed thing. Yeah. And uh, feels good. Season six feels good. Two episodes in, uh, we're gonna try to make it better for next week. Obviously, <laughs> we do all these pre-checks to make sure it's perfect, and then it's not. And it's what it is. We're not perfect. No. The kits aren't perfect. They're not. They'll never be perfect. You're gonna miss some hooks. You're gonna miss some things. You're gonna get way too much peacock curl. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna get sometimes not an enough. entire peacock, actually. <laughs> yeah. Did you name your peacock? Oh, man. Is the question. Uh, um, <clears throat> but I guess that's something for you guys to strive towards uh, is the acceptance of the imperfection. And that's, I guess, what Thursday Night Live is is not perfect, never will yeah. be. Uh, we're just gonna keep striving to make it a little bit better every week, a little bit better every year. Uh, but it's not gonna be perfect, it's gonna be far from perfect. Tim's tying. Far from perfect, oh, but yeah. it's pretty good, and it, and it catches fish. <laughs> and your flies are just as good, and they catch fish. And just remember that. It's kind of a takeaway for the week. Is uh, We're far from perfect, and we don't even strive to be perfect. We just strive to be a little better every single week. So thank you to the sponsors and to you guys who just show up uh, and believe in us and let us hang out here and be kind of uh, goofy. Mm. So Sean's saying collect 12 images of what? We'll go do the quiz and you'll get your first image. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go read them. We're going to go Tim, Guy on the Couch, and Dana. All right. We got Nick Best here. Uh, my win is raising uh, some money towards Wellspring, Alberta by doing the Firefighter Stair Climb Challenge, climbing 13 or 1,370 stairs uh, in the Brookfield Tower, downtown Calgary. Calgary started my training Monday and have five months uh, to getting... Gear. Gear. We'd like to raise a thousand, but my goal is set to five hundred for now. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> well, Nick, if you're gonna if you're if you're gonna say you want to raise a thousand, that five hundred isn't it's not acceptable. Say a thousand. Go raise a thousand. Don't yeah. don't set a goal and then set yourself like you can do it, man. Trust me. Absolutely. Mr. Camp. Sir, the win for the week is getting all clear on a physical today that I've been dreading, anxious, and worried about for the last few weeks. Looking forward to putting that behind me and getting back into the workforce with a clear bill of health. Looking forward to being myself again. Yeah. Walking straight. Mr. Struthers. My win, my rock star wife. See, guys? <laughs> Janine, I love You're you. Screwed. You're, You're screwed. always my win. I don't have to share it here because you know it. <laughs> uh, uh, supporting me uh, through my surgery recovery. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Uh, Morgan, uh, my win for this week is surviving my first week being in camp for the first time in Grand Prairie. Thankful for the work. Not so thankful for the minus 50 uh, degree weather, though. Yeah. Mr. Roger, thanks again for the bingo win, but my big what's important now is my son-in-law was, admit, was admitted to the hospital this evening for an infection. So far, we have no real details, but they suspect sepsis. He and my daughter live about four hours away, and I have a bag ready to go in case I need to go. Mm. Yes, so thoughts and prayers thoughts are prayers with your uh, son, Matt, son-in-law. Uh, Dean, my win stopped in at Craft Nation and Friesen Brothers. Felt good to support those that support the TNL family. Mm -hmm. uh, Bags, my win for the week is simple. I'm healthy, doing well. My wife is really doing well in her new career. Simply, I'm just grateful. Cheers, everyone. Uh, but I got a jet. Peace. Peace out. The OG couch guy. <laughs> <laughs> my win, I had dental work and it went well and my furnace died last night and I had a terrible night watching the temps drop and trying to keep the kids comfortable. Today I managed to get a good guy in to fix it and we've been back up to temp just in time for the crazy cold. It was really, really tough and to feel so helpless and I was so worried. What doesn't break me only makes me stronger. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Chaz, my win going to site to visit the team working outside. When I pulled up, they all had big smiles. So proud to witness great people working hard. Love Chaz. <laughs> uh, Ken, my win for the week, getting a new wetliner bottom in my boat. Getting my U9 hockey team ready for the minor hockey. LPCF OQP. TNL. Mr. Augustin, my win for the week, I got to hang out with my old fishing buddy this week. He is 84 years old. I get to talk to Paula every day. She's amazing. My oldest son is 26 and finally realized it's time to grow up. <laughs> and I'm very proud of his efforts. Cole is my hero and it's cool getting to meet him on my very first day. Thanks, Eric. Crap Beer Nation, win having platforms to support our community. We have mental health and suicide prevention booklets at both businesses. Tiff said lots of guys took books last weekend. Nice to see men stepping up to help themselves and or their friends and family. That's awesome. Uh, Joey, my win for this week. <laughs> my wife and I are expecting baby number two coming March. Oh, yeah. I finished painting his nursery today. His name will be Fisher. That's oh, awesome, that's man. Awesome. Super congrats. Congrats, man. Wow, looks like there's a few coming in March. <laughs> yeah, this month. Good night, Donna, if you're not already gone. Nick, I do have a whole pile of challenge coins. Patches and challenge coins for trade. <laughs> for trade. It's you, Cole. Mr. Craig Jones, the fishing partner. Win late to the party and didn't get the tie, but I got to watch my kiddos do their favorite hobbies tonight. Often busy coaching other people's kids, but watching them watch swimming for them both. And my youngest is basketball game. She's small, but so feisty. <laughs> Love the drive and the determination. Yeah. And Cameron and Peyton, they're awesome. Mr. McKenna, tough week for my mom with health issues. Made some progress in the hospital today. Every day with her is a blessing, which I used to not think about much. One yeah. day will be a last day. Not today. Not today. As I shared that quote the other day, it's like, they're always, I can't remember how exactly it was, but it was something like, you're always going to have a last day with somebody. You just never know when. Hmm. It's daunting. That's part of the, hmm. it's interesting. Whether, whether it's, passing on to a new place whether you're not friends anymore i just think there's always a last day that you spend with someone yeah there will be for sure <clears throat> looks like mike kind of understands that uh mike he said when for this week uh i'm feeling the loss of an old co-worker from fort mac and a bull river guide the times that i ran into tom windsor were never dull mm. sorry buddy that sucks Talk to me more about that, Mike. I don't recognize the name. Yeah, you do. That's not nice. Did not know that. Tom Windsor. Hmm. Yeah. He's, uh, I did not know that. Very close with their family. Um... Gary. Cool. My win is being with my wife and visiting with great friends as well as her brother and sister in law. Late Christmas presents to ourselves with this traveling knowing we are blessed. Mm. Mr. Sean, win minus 50 up here, but I've really enjoyed driving my girls to and from school as well as coaching them all week. Have to miss a, miss, miss a, miss a, miss a, a bunch <laughs> of this amazing show, but got a few hoppers done and here for the wins. Nice. Yeah. Mayor. The mayor, my win for the week. I have had my rock Norma for 37 years yesterday, hoping for another 37. Cool. March 7 is a good day. Well, that's then. awesome. Congrats to you guys. That's 37 years. That's yeah, a feat. That's freaking awesome. Ryan, win today was being off of work and getting some rentals done. Every day is a good day when you get to Kool Aid Man a wall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim, you probably don't know what that is. I do know what that is. Okay, Gosh. Okay, okay. 
He watched Family Guy. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Hmm. Kind of shook about Tom Windsor. But yeah, so uh, as the show goes, those are the wins. And um, <clears throat> yeah. So if you have any more wins, um, put them up here. If you don't, we'll wait until next week. We're, we got to find some, we got to trim the show. <laughs> no, we Not don't. True. It really Not doesn't true. matter. Never. No compromise. Uh, but as always, we will say goodbye. And uh, hopefully all of you will be back and bring some friends next week as we enter episode three with the wine booby in the pooter book caddis. And we don't know who will be on the brown couch, um, but we'll have to wait and see. We don't know what will be on the baking cam. Make sure you go online and do the quiz because you're going to want to download you want to get the picture. You're going to need that one because it's kind of important to start your puzzle. You need them all. Uh, so check them out. It's like Pokemon. <laughs> Got to have all the cards. Until next week, yeah. folks. I'm Dana. And I'm Tim. And I'm the couch guy. And he's the couch <laughs> guy. Uh, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Love people, catch fish, and uh, be someone's reason to smile this week. Mm. Truly. Really, and note it when you do, because you'll know it. You will know it. All right. Till next week. Till then, gotta find a better way to piece it's out so of hard that piece. I can feel my body cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look at me deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. So put your hand in mine. Follow me. Let me waste your time. Set up the do some stupid shit. Take a seat. Let me waste your time. So I'll be top of time. Stop it,